Maryland Terrapins with a record of two and two on the season. Penn State with a record of three and one. Penn State opened with a win over Rutgers, 15 to 12. They then beat Iowa, 20 to 17. William and Mary, 56 18. And last week at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, the game that you perhaps saw here on TCS Metro Sports, they lost to the number one ranked and undefeated Longhorns, 28 to three. For Maryland, Syracuse beat them in their opener, 23 to seven. Then they lost to surprising Vanderbilt, now ranked in the top 20, 23 14. But then two straight wins on the road. Maryland beat West Virginia 20 to 17 last week in an ACC conference game. They beat Wake Forest 38 to 17. George Maryland, of course, been looking for a replacement for Boomer Esiason. That is easier said than done. A number two draft choice is going to start tomorrow for the Cincinnati Bengals. They found his backup, Frank Reich. Reich will not play today. I would imagine that any coach is concerned about coming into a game with a backup quarterback. Well, a coach is always nervous with an inexperienced quarterback. But when you come into a big game like this, even though Galbar played well against Wake Forest, he went six for six. This is an entirely different uh, ball game. He's coming in here starting against a major college football team on their home field. So I'm sure uh, Coach Ross is quite apprehensive. Gelbaugh got into the game against Wake Forest. It was his first to chance to throw the ball. He was six for six and led two scoring drives for the Maryland Terrapins. It's a great day for football. It's the kind of day that was created for football or vice versa. It is now 52 degrees, but it is expected to reach near 60 degrees. The wind, 6 to 12 miles per hour. It should not be a factor in the football game. It will be blowing from right to left as you look at it on your screen. For our head coach Joe Paterno, another challenge. He felt this was a young football team starting only four seniors out of the starting 22. One that would get better as the year went along, but one that had to mature. And he's wondering, will the loss to Texas mature this club in a hurry? Well, you can find an awful lot about a football team after a loss. Uh, in the Penn State-Texas game, some of the errors that were committed by Penn State are correctable. And what you use that, you use that kind of like a matrix as a learning experience. Now, if the kids respond, rebound, and can continue their winning ways, and you say, okay, it was a good learning experience, and we're going to get better and better and become a good football team. If you, can, you don't learn from it, and you continue to make your mistakes, then you got problems. From an injury standpoint, we have already chronicled that Frank Reich, the starting quarterback for Maryland, will not play. He is not dressed up. He is on the sidelines, but in street clothes, Stan Gelbaugh will take his spot. One of Maryland's starting offensive linemen, Messner is not playing, and the reason he is Jewish, and today is the Jewish holiday, Yom Kippur, so he uh, is not at the ball game. So they had to change their offensive line around a bit. The officials for today's game: Ray Bauer, Donald McDonald, William Cronin, George Marasposia, George Cullen, Albert Farber, and. Dan Sullivan, the clock operator. For Penn State, starting guard Rob Smith will not play. Injured a knee last week. Also not playing today. Wide out Kevin Campbell. He was hurt a couple of weeks ago. And DJ Dozier, who missed Penn State's second and third games of the season, came back to play about a half against Texas. Last week, he re-injured that groin problem that had kept him out of the prior two games. He is doubtful for today, and I think it would be safe to say, George, that your brother Joe would like to win this game without DJ Dozier so that he is not battling this problem all season long. Well, yeah, you know, they want to win a game, but it's a dilemma. You know, you put your best running back in, and he, he's been nagged by this boring ball, and he, he keeps aggravating it. And you might never have him 100% for the whole season if you don't let it heal properly. I'm sure he's going to go with Mumford and Clark, see how the, games go, go, the game goes on. But there is a possibility in a perfect situation he might spot Dozier. He looked good in warm-ups, but again, that can be uh, sometimes misleading. Dozier, a thousand-yard rusher last year, in fact, the first one to ever rush for a thousand yards as a freshman at Penn State, has only gained 140 yards. But to give you an idea, he has averaged 5.8 yards per carry, and he's the guy that can turn a four-yard gain into a 60-yard gain. Well, he's a great back. I mean, it's just you know, everybody uh, concludes that he's a great one, and. It's just unfortunate, he, you know, he got the groin pull and he's missed so many uh, ball games. But you want to keep, he's got a tough schedule ahead of him. He's got a lot of tough teams to play. You want that type of a ball player to be healthy so he can really show you what he can do and he can make his contribution to the team. Well, we've discussed the possible strategies of the game. Penn State coming out of the field. The Maryland team is already at their sideline. And the captains are getting set to meet at midfield. What college football is all about. You see the balloons being sent up into the air. 
Maryland plays a wide tackle six. They've been playing it for years. They started under Jerry Claiborne. And of course, he had a lot of personnel. When you got Randy White, uh, you can play a wide tackle one when Randy White is the one tackle. But as uh, Coach Paterno explained in our pregame analysis, it is not the true stand up hard rock wide tackle six. They do substitute cornerbacks for linebackers as we, well, we get set for the toss of the coin. There's a head, there's a tail, falling in the air for a missile will throw it again. And comes a tail, tail it is, you've got a touch. He's deferring to the second half. Wait a second. Maryland has won the toss. He fires to the second half. It'll be your choice this half. You want the ball? Let's go one to Spin around this way, boys. Blue will receive in this end. Good luck. Over 84,000 fans on hand at Beaver Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania. Maryland to kick off. Jess Atkinson, a wonderful kicker for Maryland, will kick deep to Penn State. Tony Mumford and Kevin Woods back deep. This is Woods five yards deep. And he will have to doubt it after bobbling the kickoff. Woods was averaging 20.4 yards per return. There will be no return. Penn State will start out at their own 20 on the touchback. Let's take a look at that Penn State starting offensive unit. The quarterback, Doug Sprang. Tony Mumford and Steve Smith, the starting running backs in the I tandem. Herb Bellamy, Rocky Washington, the wideout. Dean Demidio is the tight end. The offensive line, strong tackle stands short. Jeff Wolfter, Nick Hayden, the center. Mark Sickler starting for the injured Rob Sick, uh, Smith at guard. And Chris Conlon at tackle. Doug Strang, the senior quarterback, has only completed 40% of his passes this year. Penn State opens in a wing left. Steve Smith. Got room up to the 25-yard line. Penn State starting out with the drive of a right tackle. It's a gain of five. It'll be second down and five yards to go for Maryland. Ted Chapman, Tom Parker, Greg Thompson, and Dwayne Dunham, the front four. Shank Weiler, Fawcett, Wilson, and Donis are the outside linebackers. All the outside people line up on the end to make the wide tackle six. Keita Covington, Al Covington, they are brothers. And Joe Krause is the strong safety. Second and five, Smith again. Left tackle near the 30-yard line of close to the first down. They'll spot him about a foot shy of that first down. It'll be third down and inches. I mentioned Doug Strang has only managed to complete 40% of his passes, although Coach Joe Paterno defended him this week, saying that some of the problem he's had, their wideouts have been injured. They have not worked together consistently in practice because of those injuries. Plus, they have used as many as seven and eight wide receivers in a game. First third down conversion attempt, Joe Paterno with a record of 173, 39 and 2 in his 19th year at Penn State. Power eye to the right. Tim Manoa, he's got the first down to the 31 yard line. So Penn State comes out, three cracks at it, picks up 11 yards and the first first down of the game. So far, Stan, Penn State's been running the ball up the middle. Uh, one of the things about the wide tackle six, actually, the defense plays four tackles, two over the guards, two on the inside shoulders of the ends, and you got two linebackers over the tackles, and they want to keep everything inside to those linebackers, and Penn State's just going right at those over their guards, trying to establish something inside. Will those linebackers drop off in the pass coverage in the flat? across the 35 and out to the 38 yard line. Tony Mumford, who is averaging five yards per carry, 293 yards back as Penn State's leading rusher, picks up seven. Once again, they stay in size, just a little tailback draw play. They go up inside the tackles, good blocking at the point of attack. As far as their linebackers, they use their defensive ends as linebackers. And that's what Joe meant when he says a little bit more sophisticated. They will drop off for outside, underneath coverage. 
But the inside linebackers basically will take hooks against the pass. Second down and three for Penn State. Four plays on the ground. That's right back to throw. Fires over the middle. It is in intercepted by Maryland. The ball was intended for Rocky Washington to bounce down his arms. And Eric Wilson, a senior from Charlottesville, Virginia, Maryland's leading tackler, a tackler comes up with the ball. 6'2, 248 yards. And now Stan and Strang has plenty of time. It's an, under, an underneath pattern to Rocky Washington. The flank are coming across. He put it right on the numbers. Washington, you see it again here. Washington did not squeeze the ball. It pops up. Maryland has the interception. Scott Shankweiler hit Washington and separated him. First down, Maryland at the Penn State 43. Holder in short motion. But down at the fullback, trying to get outside, but he is dropped by Lance Hamilton. Bob White, the defensive end, hit him first. He was cleaned up by Hamilton. Rich Padonic is a tough runner. Stan Gelbach, quarterback. Alvin Blanc, the tailback. Padonic is the fullback. Holder and Hill, the wideouts. Farrell Edmonds, the big tight end. Edwards, Haraka, Glover, Holinka, and Marleville, the transfer from Notre Dame, is the right tackle. Second down, nine. Gelbach out in the flat. Blunt looking for blockers, gets inside the 40 down to the 36-yard line. Pick up five, it'll bring up third down and a short three. Mike Zordich made the tackle for Penn State. Stan, Coach Ross is from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's an ex offensive coordinator. Now, there's Penn State's defense, White, Moles, Russo, and Morgan. Conlon, Mash, Antonio, Graham, and Zordich. My and last play was a little screen play where they, the quarterback reads the linebacker drop. Third down, three yards to go. Maryland in the pro set. Wow. Escapes one tackle. He's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Alvin Blount, the tailback, did well to get outside. Defensive end, Dan Morgan, Mike Zornick puts him out of bounds, but it is a first down for Maryland. Blunt averaging 4.8 yards per carry. Well, they're the plays that kill you. Morgan had him in the backfield for a five-yard five loss, let him slip loose. Blount turns the corner, and Maryland has a first down. Coming into the game, Penn State was a plus three in turnovers, now a plus two. Maryland was minus one. They are now even on the season. The turnover ratio is what we're speaking of. First and ten from the 30. Short drop. Gelball looking sideline. The pass is too tall. Intended for Aziz Zidin Abdur Raouf. Now his teammates call him Ziz, which I think is probably a pretty good suggestion for us, too. I don't think we'll have time to get the whole name in on the replay, but uh, again, you, you can look for Maryland to run a pro passing game. And that's why the quarterback is just so important in you know, the scheme of things. Anytime he gets one-on-one -on -one coverage on a wide out, he'll throw that short out. Chuck Strang, who had completed only 40% of his passes, that was the fifth interception, although that one has to be charged for the wide receiver. Holder, motion near side. To get inside to Donnie, and only an ankle tackle by Donnie Grant prevents him from getting a first down. He's down to the 24-yard line. Shane Conlon also cleaning up on the play, but he does gain six to bring up third down and four. Well, that was an audible by Gelber. He was, that's why uh, Moles jumped off side and got back, but it was an audible and it was a good call. Maryland one for one on third down. Third down and four. That's Kevin Glover, an outstanding offensive lineman at center. Number seven, he also a co-captain. He's the inside the line. He's got the first down and plenty more. He's all the way down to the 15-yard line. Big hole on a delayed draw. Carmen Nash Antonio and Mike Zordich make the tackle, but Blunt's got another first down. Uh, from a split backfield, throw set. This is a wide draw. Watch him take it all the way to the outside. They got Morgan coming up too far upfield. They kicked him out, and Blount takes it for a nice first down. Maryland intercepting Doug Strang's pass. They started at the Penn State 43. They now have a first and 10 at the 15. Intended for Eric Holder. The pass too tall. Good coverage on the play for Penn State. Holder is a junior, 5'11, 193 from Palmer Park, Maryland. Once and again, this is an audible. He catches man to man coverage. Hamilton on Holder. He just goes out and up. The ball's overthrown. The pass is there. It's a touchdown. Holder has eight receptions, averaging 12 yards per catch this year, but he has not caught one for a touchdown. 
Interesting that Maryland would pass on first down. Now they face a second and ten. Blitz. Gelbach in the flat. He's got his tight end. Farrell Edmonds. The short game. About the 12 yard line. Safety Ray Isom made the tackle. Well, Penn State came with the blitz, and Isom has the tight end. Man for man, and he plays it perfectly. He's right there to make the tackle. It's a gain of two yards. Now it brings up third down and eight. That's Edmonds' fifth reception on the year now. And he was only averaging two and a half yards per catch, so he actually was a little short of his average in the two yard game. Galpah rolling. Fires. It is incomplete and almost intercepted. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. He would have been short of the first down anyway. And that'll bring on the Maryland field goal. Mike Sorich applied the hit that separated the receiver from the ball. Well, it was a good call, but it was good defense also. Uh, Delgo realized he couldn't run it in and try to throw the ball. Jess Atkinson is Maryland's all-time leading scorer. He has been a prolific field goal kicker. He was cut by the soccer team. They decided, well, I'll try football. Well, he's now Maryland's leading scorer this year on field goals. He is five out of eight. This will be a 31-yard attempt, an angle to the left, with a following win. The kick is up. It is long enough, and it is good. So Maryland is able to take advantage of the turnover. They convert it into a field goal by Jess Atkinson. There's a timeout in the action to score. Maryland three, Penn State nothing. We'll be back right after this. play in the first quarter. Jess acted from 31 yard field goal. He's given Maryland a three to nothing lead. He will kick off again. And once again, Tony Mumford on the far side. Kevin Woods, the freshman from Birmingham, Alabama, at the bottom of the screen. He's averaging a bit better than 20 yards per return. The first kick was not returned. This one is very, very high. Woods again, five yard deep. We'll take the touch back and Penn State again. They'll start out at their own 20 yard line. Penn State's first possession, they managed to pick up one first down before the interception. Maryland's field goal drive, 32 yards and 10 plays, took a bit more than three minutes and again ended in Atkinson's field goal. Well, Penn State showed they could run against a wide tackle six, George. I would imagine they would continue to attempt to do that. Well, I'm sure they'll go back to the original game plan. The interception was unfortunate. Uh, the round was there and the pass was Back to him up and finds a hole, gets all the way up to the 27-yard line. Penn State's running game has been rather effective in limited attempts. It's a seven-yard game for Mumford. It'll bring up second down and three. We'll see now how Penn State's attacking in the middle right here. You see the trap with the number 64, pulls. Mumford follows the trap and gets up in the middle and makes a nice game about 67 yards. Kevin Donis, outside linebacker from Pittsburgh, as a matter of fact. North Coast High School made the tackle. Good piece of running by Mumford, who did follow the ball. Second and three. Single setback to Steve Smith, and this is Smith. He's got a first down. He gets out to the 33, gains six yards, and the first and ten. Chuck Fawcett, outstanding inside linebacker, sophomore from Cinnamon, South Jersey. 6'2", 248 pounds, number 11. Stan, if the fans are wondering why everything's going inside, they don't want to want to, uh, Maryland doesn't want you to get outside because they got their tackles playing almost head up on the offensive end. So you can't get outside. So a sweep is a difficult play to execute against Maryland. Very difficult. Out of the eye, first and ten, Penn State, their own 33. Lumpert does well to get out to the 35 and pick up a couple. There wasn't much there. Penetration in the Penn State backfield. Eric Wilson, leading tackler on the Maryland Terrapin team, made the stop, gave it to him, second down eight. That time Wilson came on a little blitz, a little stunt by himself and filled the hole. Both those inside linebackers, Wilson is uh, 236 or 240, and four sets about 235. So they want to drive everything, funnel it into the inside to those big linebackers. Receiver split to either side, second down and eight, striding in front. He's in big trouble. Now he'll never get out of his sack. Back at the 25-yard line. Strang looked like he was trying to get outside the run, but the pressure from Greg Thompson and Ted Chapman, number 96, finally got to him as they closed it on in the pocket. Well, they, a little fake of the draw play here to Munford. Now Thompson, 50, took an inside maneuver and got penetration and broke Strang's concentration. He 
did the wise thing. He ate the ball. Tom Parker had him around the ankle, so the Chapman could clean him up. That is Maryland's fifth sack of the year, and it is the ninth sack that the Penn State offensive line has allowed. Third down, 16 yards to go. Now you see Maryland has dropped off this outside end. Now Stray's got time, but no one to throw to. Fires out in the flat to Tony Mumford. 30, 35, still on his feet up the 38 yard line. It'll be shy of the first down, but a good job by Tony Mumford to prevent a loss. Safety Al Covington, a junior from Danville, Virginia, made the tackle. Well, you see, Maryland only came with four. They took Shankweiler, the defensive end, and they dropped him off to double cover to both wide receivers. Now, it was a good drop off to Mumford. It was excellent running, but he had too far to go. Keita Covington will be back deep. He is averaging 14.7 yards per return. John Bruno putting for Penn State. Covington in his 19. Gets a great block. He's out to the 30. Fumbles the football. It's loose at the 28 yard line. Let's wait for him to recover. Maryland has recovered their own fumble, and a Penn State player is down. Boy, what a block that was at the point of attack. And there is a flag down as well. John Bruno averaging 39.4 yards per return. Penalty call will go against Maryland. And I'm going to assume that the clip is on the player who is currently down. We'll try to find out who that is for. Mike Stillman. He's the man who snaps on punt and usually the first one down. The clipping penalty goes against Maryland, moves them all the way back to just outside their 12 yard. Clipping. During the return, first and ten. 7.02 to play in the first quarter. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Maryland 3, Penn State nothing. Your attention, we'll be back please. Right if after you or someone near you requires medical assistance, contact the nearest doctor, fully volunteer, or emergency squad member. Snap run punch of Penn State was the man injured on the plays. Oh, I walked off on his own power. Here's a look at how it happened. Well, you see Stover number 62, the snapper, and he's the first one down. That shows good hustle. And you'll see the clip coming right here. You have to get your head in front. He hit him in behind, and that's a clip. Maryland starting from their own 12 after the penalty. Neal across the 15 with the 16-yard line. Tommy Neal who is the alternate tailback, along with Alvin Blount. Picks up four yards, it'll be second down and six. Mike Russo and Todd Moles, the inside tackle from Penn State, made the stop. Neal is a sophomore from Gaithersburg, Maryland. He's averaging 4.1 yards per carry, and has seen a considerable amount of action. And the 20, John Bonanno comes in a wide receiver. Maryland, they shift the tight end. Fazio, second down. Six. Inside of the Donick, he gets to the 20, near the 21, short of the first down. Third down and two. Donnie Graham, Todd Moles, in on the stop for Penn State. The Donick is a tough cookie, George. He's only 5'9, but he really knocks people over when he's in the ballgame. He's about 225. He has a real low center of gravity. It's tough to get a good shot at him. Well, it's trying to trap a little bit inside Penn State's end. Bill Rogers comes in at tight end. They come out with a slot to the left on third and two. That's up Bill Rogers in motion. It's wide to Neal looking. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped right there. 
Lance Hamilton, left quarterback, came up, met him head on at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down for Maryland. They put, they put Raleigh in motion as a blocker, but it was perfectly played by Hamilton. Bobby Ross will not take the chance on going for it on fourth down in less than a yard. And this brings up an interesting situation. Stan Gelbaugh, the starting quarterback, is Maryland's punter. But because he had a starting quarterback, they are not going to go with Daryl Wright. He has never before punted in a college game. He's a freshman, so the pressure certainly is on him. Kevin Woods and Ray Isom back deep for Penn State. Token rush. Good kick. Kevin Woods looking outside. Gets a block. Gets into Maryland territory near the 44-yard line. Kevin Woods, who was averaging 5.9 yards per punt return, gets a better one than that. Gives Penn State good field position. 4.51 to play in the first quarter. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Maryland 3, Penn State nothing. We'll be back right after this. Penn State is in the habit of alternating their backfields in tandem. So instead of Steve Smith and Tony Mumford, we now have Tim Manoa, number 44 at fullback, and number 48, David Clark at tailback. And George, that's a good indication that Joe Paterno does not want to use DJ Dozier unless absolutely necessary. I don't believe you'll see DJ today unless it's a spot situation. But Penn State still has not gotten that passing game cranked up. They're going to need it today, I think, to beat Maryland. First down and 10 from the 44. Manoa's met head out of the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nothing there. Tom Parker, the sophomore from Baltimore, makes the stop. No gain. Second down, 10 yards to go. That time Parker, who's lined up over the guard, he pinched to the inside because Penn State had been trapping up inside. So that's what I mean. You have to get some kind of a passing game uh, going to, to go against this defense because basically it's stronger against the run than it is against the pass. Strang has thrown twice, completed one for 10 yards. Second down and 10, slot to the right. Rocky Washington in motion. Strang, with time, throws in the flat. Incomplete and a very poor pass. It was intended for tailback David Clark, and it was just a poor throw. Third down and 10. I think the tight end of Maryland went into what we call a too deep situation where they had two free safeties and they had the corners cover. One corner rolls up and the defensive end dropped off to take the outside and there was a big hole right over the middle. Looked like the video was open. Penn State one out of two on third down conversions. Straight to throw. He dropped, he throws over the middle. Got a man and was caught at the 30 yard line for Penn State first down. Kurt Bellamy. Makes the reception, but it's his sixth catch of the year. Gives Penn State a first down. I listen to Doug Brown and Strang, who used to sing that. He has sufficient time. Here comes a little pressure. Now watch how he steps up inside, finds Bellamy on a hook, a curl. This is what Maryland is giving him. Good reception. Herb Bellamy, a freshman from Staten Island. First down, 10, Penn State at the 30. Strang with a play fake, looking deep. For Rocky Washington, touchdown, Penn State! 31-yard touchdown pass from Doug Strain for Rocky Washington. Washington's fourth catch of the year, his first touchdown pass, and his Strain's fifth touchdown, or third touchdown pass of the year. All right, Stan, now watch them go from here. This is what they needed. A little fake to block up inside. They've been running inside all day long. It's a first down play. Rocky Washington has 4-4 four, four speed. Has his man beat, but the important thing, the ball was there today. It was a good throw. Remember, college football, you only need one foot in bound. Nick Gansitano, 9 for 9 in extra points this year. This is one time you don't mind a penalty down here. Sometimes the kicker's got a better shot at it. A few yards off, but this should really boost uh, Strang's confidence and uh, Rocky Washington, who hasn't played much but looked awfully good last week. If they get their passing game going with that strong running game they got, they're going to be a tough football player. Well, Washington was even with the defender about the 10 yard line, then really put on a burst of speed. and. You know, that's what the pro scouts look for. Not only your flat out speed, but your speed from the time the ball is thrown to the time you can get to it. All good receivers control their speed. They always go in the high gear when they have to. Right, Gansitano. Work a little harder. 
for the extra point. He's got it anyway. 3.47 to play in the first quarter. Penn State marching 44 yards. The touchdown, a 31-yard strike from Dutch Strang to Rocky Washington. Uh, now, this is the type of a pass we've seen Strang throw before. Now, see how no tentativeness. He let it go. Washington does an out and up. As I said, he's got 4-4 four, four speed. He's got his man beat. The ball was right there on his inside, in his, on his inside shoulder. Now, this fake the clock helped. It throws the linebacker and throws the cornerback just enough for Washington to make his move. Penn State had been running up inside. You see the ball's got a, the perfect arc. Giving the receiver a chance to get under it. Well, that is key well to done. Coving, that is key to Covington, the left corner, who was beaten on the play. Had good coverage from the 15 yard line. And that is Covington, who was back deep. Massimo Manka does the kicking for Penn State on kickoffs. Nick Gantitano does the place kicking. Although in games when given an opportunity, they have switched. Manka doing the place kicking and Gantitano. Doing the kicking off. Make a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. Triple safety, but it's coming to his back at his own five yard line. Make his kick. It's deep. Covington will take at the goal line. That's the 20. Still on his feet. Finally down at the 25 yard line. Keita Covington averaging 22.2 yards per return. Gets about his average, a little bit more than that. Rogers Alexander. First man in on the hit. I want to remind you that the broadcast cable cast rights to this game are granted by Penn State University and Maryland University to TCS Metro Sports. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without written consent of Penn State University and Maryland University is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast have been hired and paid for by TCS Metro Sports in consultation with Penn State University and the University of Maryland. Here's that little counter bootleg, what we call. It was a nice fake by Gelbar. They sneak. You see Badanek sneak out into the flat to the right of the screen. Nobody there. Gelbar had a, an option to run a pass. He throws it to Badanek. He usually is very sure handed, and Sidna came up and made the hit. Badanek had seven receptions coming into the game. Drop that one. Second and ten, Maryland, their own 25. Inside handoff to the tailback, and the running room is Tommy Neal. Up the 30 to the 34. He'll be a yard shy of the first down. The pick up of nine. Linebacker Bob Unko made the tackle. That's just a quick handoff. They caught Penn State's defensive down floor coming across the line of scrimmage. That's good running by Neal. Like Penn State, Maryland alternating their running backs. Maryland now facing a third and one. They are two out of four on third down conversion. Motion with the extra tight end. The give off is to the Donick, but he is a tough runner. He picks up six all the way out to the 40 yard line. Donnie Graham made the tackle for Penn State, but Donick really finds his hole and goes through it. Well, put the tight end in motion is an extra blocker, but he finds a crack to the inside. He wanted a first down, but he got, uh, he got a lot more. This is a similar situation with, uh, last week when Texas broke it for 51 yards. Penn State's got to shore up those inside cracks. Well, anytime you have a short yard of defense, there is the danger of someone going all the way. It happened to Penn State last week. Maryland with a first down. Thomas Neal, he's hit at the line of scrimmage. You can hear the letter from down up here. Mike Russo made the tackle. Help from defensive end Bob White. No game will be second down and 10. Maryland is a very big football team. Across the front, 270, 276, 262, 273, and 300 pounds. Right tackle, number 73, J.D. Marlovet is 301 pounds. Their training table must be steel and forced. Second and ten. Gelbaugh flushed out. Boy, does he have time. He throws over the middle. He's got a receiver. Complete to Badonic, who is a safety valve man, out to the 47-yard line. So Gelbaugh does well to pick up seven yards. It'll be third down and three. 
Well, he had all day long to throw the ball. What happened? Penn State had a little bit of an inside stunt. You see Russo, 67, had a little game on. They all got picked off to the inside. He just rolled away, looking for a receiver. A lot of poise, picks out the down. Yellow ball now, three out of seven, but for only 12 yards. Third down and three. Three for five on third down conversions. Pitch wide, Neil Fumble picks it up, and that will cost him a first down. He did not handle the pitch cleanly, and that gave Dan Morgan time to get in to drop him. Uh, he got Madonic leading. Actually, Neil was very fortunate because the ball popped right up to him, and there's Dan Morgan, made the penetration, and also the tackle. Ray Isom is a single safety awaiting the punt of Darrell White. Isom averaging 4.7 yards per punt return. The win there is is at Wright's back, so he'll be looking to deaden the ball in the corner. He kicks for the corner. Isom, he lets it go, and it's still running loose, and Isom falls on the ball on his own three-yard line, and is most fortunate to do so. The rule of thumb is, George, if it's inside the 10, let it go. And that ball was going to roll right into the end zone and come back out to the 20. I mean, you know, I know Joe's got some gray here, but he's going to have a lot more after today. Kick the game cost Penn State a touchdown last week. Almost cost him a touchdown this week. Join us for our next telecast of the National Independent Football Network, Saturday, October 13th at 12 noon, when the Air Force Academy Falcons meet the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame on the TCS Metro Sports Television Network. Penn State at their own three, and they'll try to grind this one out. Tim Manoa. Fullback gets out to the five. A couple of yards. He's second down and eight yards to go. You know, one play like that, even though Maryland didn't recover, changes the whole structure and tempo of the game. Maryland's going to come with a tough defense now, trying to make Penn State run out, knowing that they're reluctant to throw the ball. And if Penn State has to kick, Maryland will get excellent field position. Well, just like the Penn State touchdown, it was set up on the clipping penalty on the uh, punt return. Maryland had a punt. Penn State got the ball at the Maryland 44 yard line. And that was the last play of the first quarter. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of action. The score, Penn State 7, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. In the first quarter, Penn State had a total of 80 yards total offense. Maryland had a total of 61. Penn State starting out the second quarter. They're on five-yard line, second down and eight. David Clark, right tackle, not much there. Gets out to the seven-yard line, a gain of another two. It'll be third down and six. Ted Chapman and Bob Arnold make the tackle. Arnold is a freshman from Wincote, Pennsylvania. David Clark seeing action because Dozier is hurt. Clark is a sophomore from Deptford, New Jersey, averaging nearly eight yards per carry. But he did have an 80-yard run two weeks ago. It's William Mary, so that kind of pumped up that average. Perhaps they might throw the ball here because I know they desperately want to keep the ball and try to get a drive. They're two out of three on third down conversion. Strang with the roll. He can run for it if he wants. To the 10. Near the 15, and it will be very close. As to whether he got that first down or not, depends on the spot. Steve Kelly and Al Covington made the tackle for Maryland. It is a first down. Well, that was a roll out, and that's exactly what they did. He had the option to run a pass, and he wisely put the ball away. Went for the first down. This is a big first down now. Roll out action. Gives the quarterback the option to pass or run. He knows he only has to go three yards for the first down. And as I said, he wisely puts it away, puts his head down, makes the first down. Penn State's fifth first down of the game. This time they line up in a slot left. Clark is the slot man to the left. And Noah the fullback. And Noah, right guard. Gets out to the 19. Give him four. Second and six. Left linebacker Scott Shankweiler from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Makes the tackle. A lot of Pennsylvania players on the Maryland team. They recruit the area very heavily. So far, George, and sometimes it's difficult to tell from up here in the peanut gallery, there's some real solid hitting going on. In the interior part of the line, 
Uh, Maryland's changing their defense, especially on the corners a little bit, for, uh, for their pass protection. And that was last play was in order, but they tried to run a quick trap up the middle. Uh, Penn State in the eye, but with a slot to the right. Sprang with the roll. Now the number one. They'll do so to the 25 and does the hook slide out to the 27 yard line. And a first down for Penn State. Greg Thompson and Chuck Fawcett make the tackle. That is DJ Dozier, number 42, the very talented Zappa running back. He re injured his groin for the last week against Texas. Also in a mild concussion. And Joe Paterno told us frankly before the game he would like to get out of this Maryland game without using it. Yeah, the reason why that play is being so effectively, Maryland is dropping one of their ends off to help out pass protection. If the quarterback gets outside of that contained, he can run with the ball. Tony Mumford hit behind the line of scrimmage and manages to spin forward for a yard. Greg Thompson made great penetration. Thompson is a senior, one of the few on the Maryland defense. He is from Alexandria, Virginia. Give him a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Nice play by Thompson. Let's pause five seconds for a station identification. This is the TCS Metro Sports Television Network. allowed just 146 yards per game rushing. And you can see they play the run extremely well. Second down nine, Penn State their own 28. Frank. Got a man on the sideline and with his caught at the 35-yard line, but he caught it out of bounds. The pass was complete on the far side to Tony Mumford, the tailback, but he did not land in bounds with one foot. The pass will be ruled incomplete to bring up third down and nine. Well, Maryland went into a pass defense type of a situation. And he's looking for his outlet, man. He goes to Mumford, but he's out of bounds. But at least he's looking for his outlet, man. Uh, last year, they used to hit the outlet, man, quite a bit. This year, they haven't been too successful doing it. Strang now three out of six, 54 yards. One touchdown pass, that 31 yards for Rocky Washington. Wing left. And slot left to the wide side. Looking man wide open and it is caught. Bellamy at the 47 yard line. Bert Bellamy running the hook. It's his second reception of the game. Penn State converts it to first down and 10. Kevin Donis and Joe Cross made the tackle. Now, this is a great throw. Also, get a great catch. They caught Maryland in zone defense. That's a curl pattern. But you can see how Bellamy went up, left his feet, and really struggled to get the football. Show as he can jump and get up there. Wide left after his second reception. Sprang now four out of seven. First and ten, Penn State, their own 47. Leading seven to three, second quarter. Tony Mumford gets four yards and moves into Maryland territory to the 49 yard line. 11 minutes, 25 seconds to play. Again, Penn State leading Maryland seven to three. Maryland got on the board first on a 31 yard field goal by Atkinson. Dwayne Dunham and Eric Wilson make the tackle on Mumford. It's so important to be able to hit those curl patterns against this type of a defense so you loosen up those inside linebackers and whatever end is dropping off, usually on the weak side, and that helps your running game to get better. Second and six. Penn State started this drive with their own five. Throws deep along the sideline, throw it to grabs incomplete. Double coverage by Eric Hamilton, and the ball is short up. Covington and linebacker Scott Shankweiler. So they did drop the linebacker off there. That's exactly. He's a defensive end, but really he's a linebacker. But now they got a double on that Hamilton here. Actually, Strang didn't see it, but he could have run with that football down the sidelines for at least 10 to 15 yards. Good coverage by Covington, number one. Does Hamilton have the option of breaking the pattern and heading up deep after he made that little fake on the sideline? Well, on some patterns they allow you to change, but others they don't. That particular pattern, I would say no. Third down, six yards to go. Watch the reverse to Rocky Washington. Needs a block to get outside. Breaks one tackle, but he will never get there. He will use news yardage back to his own 48. Maryland saw that coming, and Kevin Donis, the outside linebacker, made the initial hit, 
and Keita Covington cleaned him up. Well, Donis kept this from being a touchdown. It was well run, well executed. The timing was great. Now watch all the peel blocks. You see the lineman go through and come back, but one man, Donis, the defensive end, was not fooled at all. He stayed home, made a great play. Sure did. Covington gets the tackle, but really the play by Donis, a big rush on Bruno, but he gets up a nice kick. Covington will feel that is eight. Tries to come up the middle. Gets to the 12-13 wide line. The Penn State is there to cover the puck. Marcus Henderson get on the tackle. He had help from Chris Collins. Ten minutes, four seconds to play in the first half. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 7, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after the break. Kicking game certainly has had an influence on this game. In reference to field position, Maryland will start out at their own 13. Gelbaugh has completed three out of seven, but only for 17 yards and really have not thrown the ball downfield yet. Gelbaugh on the roll, got rid to the outside, to the 15, to the 20, and run out of bounds near the first down. We're going to mark about how over the 20. It will be a gain of seven. Carmen Antonio, inside running back for Penn State, ran him out of bounds. Antonio, one of the team captains, is a senior from Jeanette PA. But that time Gelbar got outside of contain. If you do that, that quarterback has the option. That time he ran for it, but sometimes he's got the option to run a throw. It's tough in the secondary. Maryland has a team now, 54 yards rushing and 12 carries, of course, including Gelbar's scramble. Alvin Brown also looking outside, but he won't get there. This time the Penn State pursuit was there. They knock him out of bounds at the 21. It's a gain of one to bring up third down and two. That is Frank Reich, and you can see that he is strapped up. He's in uniform, but uh, for appearances more than anything else. He suffered that slight separation last week against Wake Forest in Maryland's 38-17 win. And you can see his statistics. He had to come in last year when Boomer Esiason was hurt in a game against Pitt. And he did a very, very good job as Maryland won that ball game at Maryland. Third down and two. Fake pitch. This is Blunt. Hit the line of scrimmage for Falls Ford to the 25 yard line. A four yard game will be a first down. Rogers Alexander made the first hit on him. He spun away, and Mike Russo finally dropped him at the 25. So Maryland picks up their fourth first down. They get out of the deep hole they were in. And this guy bar is an excellent ball handler. That time he faked, he came out. But when he comes out out, out on alone on a bootleg, he's watching the defensive secondary and he's watching that defensive end. They're going to set up something when he comes out and tries to hit somebody deep. Well, that fake pitch to Madonna got the left side of the defense going away from the play. They were blunt to the first down. Here's Blunt again being chased by Bob White. He picks up good yardage out to the 29 yard line. You know, for the fans' sake, they're probably wondering why Maryland is running to the short side of the field into the sidelines. Well, often the defensive team will overshift to the wide side of the field, knowing that the offensive team does, does not have as much room to the short side. So Maryland's attacking the short side. One, 24 yards, five carries. He and Badonik were just about even in total yardage on the season, only 12 yards apart. Second and six. Further in motion to the near side. Here's Gelbaugh running again. To the sideline to Greg Hill. The rule complete. Well, I know. Ball hit the ground. It'll be ruled incomplete and bring up third down six. He'll look like a shortstop on that. That ball bounced. He made a nice uh, adjustment to it. Hill is the leading receiver for Maryland. 15 catches, 12 and a half yards per reception, and one touchdown catch. That coming from Frank Wright. Well, it's third down and six. Maryland four and seven on third down conversions. 8.08 to play. First half. Penn State leading Maryland 7 3. Pro set backfield. Gelbaugh with the straight ball. Over the middle. Got his man. First down, Maryland at the 43 yard line. Aziz Abdur Raouf with his 13th catch of the year. He's dangerous. He's the fastest guy on Maryland's team, averaging better than 20 yards per catch. Well, as his teammates call him Ziz, he's wide open. Penn State decided to go play it soft. Here it is, just a little curl, and that's all he needed for the first down. Excellently, beautifully thrown ball. The game is 14. Mike Zorich and Chris Sidner on the tackle. Maryland has mixed it up. Penn State has run on every first down opportunity. There's Rauf in motion. 
Harbaugh looking deep. He's got a man wide open. It is bound away at the last instant. Greg Hill was wide open, but he had to wait for the ball. Ray Isom, the strong safety, came across and batted it away. That cost Maryland a touchdown. Hill definitely had the corner beat. Yelba underthrew, threw the ball at a low trajectory, too, allowing Isom from a free safety to make it a tremendous adjustment. It came across field, knocked the ball down. That should have been six for Maryland. Chris Sidner, a senior from Rosemont, Pennsylvania, is covering Hill, loosely speaking. Second down, 10. Maryland, for the first time, aired it deep. Double tight end, Ron Fazio in the ball game at tight end. Blount, he's hit hard in a losing yard. Bob Anko, sophomore linebacker, number 93 from Swartersville, PA. Just came through, on touch. Blount will lose a yard to the 42. This is Bob Anko coming right at you. Looks like he's a middle linebacker. This is what is known as diagnosing the play. Fill the hole beautifully, just the way you're supposed to. Greg Haraka, number 57, had the responsibility of blocking Anko and didn't do it. So Maryland with third and long, third and 11. Penn State with a blitz up the middle. Gelbach fires over the middle. He's caught for a first down. He's fouled and fumbles the football. At the 42, Penn State has recovered the fumble. Greg Hill was wide open. He had the first down, but as he turned to gain more yards, he was really hit hard. And the fumble's recovered by Penn State. 6.48 to play in the first half. There's a timeout of the action. The score, Penn State 7, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after the game. First for Maryland as Greg Hill caught the reception and had a first down to Penn State 40, but on second ever trying to gain a little extra yardage. He was hit by Rogers Alexander, who caused the fumble. Alexander is from Maryland, as a matter of fact. You see, this is the same play they hit before to the right side of the street. It's a deep curl. Gelba has a very strong arm. Hill shows you what it means to come back to the ball, tries to get a little extra yardage. Alexander hits him, it's popped loose. Chris Sidner with a recovery. Penn State at their own 42, first and 10. Pitch wide, Tony Mumford. Cuts up inside of the 35, the 50, into their own territory at the 40 yard line, and very close to a Penn State first down. Chuck Fawcett, inside linebacker, made the top of four returns. That was the first line play that Penn State has tried all day long. But what they actually do, it starts off as a sweep, but he cuts it back inside and becomes an off tackle play. Mumford picked his block and beautiful. It is a first down. Lumpen now, 32 yards on six carries. Penn State, their seventh first down. See those six men at the line of scrimmage. Drop play to Lumpen. Not this time. Gets a couple to the 46 yard. It looked to me that time, George, is that one of the defensive tackles was offset over the center. Well, they overshift those four. There were four tackles. I mean, they, they call them defensive guns. There were four tackles, basically two will line up over your guards, two will line up on the inside shoulder of your end. But they will, you know, shift one way or the other relative to the formation, relative to where the ball is positioned on the field. And this is what the offensive line has to adjust to. And that allows people like Eric Wilson, the linebacker, to make all the tackles. They want to follow that stuff up the middle for their two inside linebacker. Second and eight, Penn State. Rolls right into the front. 
Just ran right into a brick wall. Some of them blue jerseys, some of them white jerseys. Just ran right into I think he ran into 58 Hayden, his own center. What well, happened, actually, they were leading the play, and Hayden pulled up suddenly. Strang must have been looking upfield for his receivers, and he didn't realize Hayden was going to pull up. Ran into him, and he goes down for a Losses all the way back to the Penn State 47, so they'll bring up third down and 15. Strang, four out of eight, 70 yards and a touchdown. Alexander hits you, your forward momentum is stopped immediately. Just one of those guys that has tremendous striking power. No game for Rick Padonic in his second down and ten. Play fake. Gelbaugh over the middle and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Tommy Neal, the tailback, the throw to the wrong side of him, although he was open. It'll be third down, ten yards to go. And now Gelbaugh, 5 for 12 for 47 yards. You know, Gelbaugh throws a ball with a low trajectory, and it's good when you throw the short stuff and curls and things like that, or backs coming out. But you can run in trouble with it with interception because when it's that low, because your linebacker's an opportunity to get the Interesting graphic. Bobby Ross is 10 and 0 in games played in October at the University of Maryland. Third and 10. Blitz. Blitz. Gelbaugh gets rid of it. It's incomplete. They're going to do it. An incomplete pass. Oh, Stan, I, I thought he caught it. Let's take a look at it. The it pass. The pass around the guy's ankle, so it was tough. The blitz was by Rogers Alexander. Watch Alexander cut to the left of the screen. Now, obviously, he put so much pressure on Gelbaugh. The ball is going right. Now, hit the ground. It hit the ground. The goal post got my way there. Sure. <laughs> You threw your glasses away in the trash two weeks ago. That's the problem. Darrell Wright with a poor kick. As he gets the roll, ball bounds to the 43 and rolls out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Her kick is about 32 yards in Penn State line. Field position in Maryland territory. Three 
53 to play in the first half. We've got a timeout of the action at Beaver Stadium in University Park. The score, Penn State 7, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Defensively giving the ball to Penn State in their territory. Penn State moved 44 yards for a touchdown. Penn State again starting out in Terrapin territory, this time in 47. 353 to play in the first half. Steve Smith follows a block up the middle. Inside the 45, down near the 42 yard line. Smith, fullback, picks up five. Tom Parker, defensive tackle, makes the tackle along with Dwayne Dunham. Steve Smith is a sophomore from Clinton, Maryland, so they are playing against some of their old friends. Penn State player down, but no, it was only a five-yard game, but it was good running because they were going to try a trap, and Maryland stuffed a trap. Hey, come and Smith on, had the presence of mind to cut it back up to the inside and make some good yards. That is Jeff Woofter, senior offensive guard from New Cumberland, West Virginia. He is down. He was injured in the Iowa game. Had a bad ankle, Steve. Yeah. Well, I don't know who they would come with because they are in a position. They're already starting Mark Sickler at one guard because Rob Smith was hurt in the Texas game a week ago. I wonder if he got that orange patch in his helmet from some of those Texas jerseys last week. There's a lot of hitting there. Well, they could come with Clayton or Andrus, uh, which would have played and have some experience. There's Jeff Wolfter. Appears to be all right. Not limping, so he probably just got his bell on his foot. Joe Paterno wearing his uh, whale pants uh, this week. Stan Clayton comes in an offensive guard. I thought he had burned those. Well, his wife tried to burn him. Come on, Dave! back and got him out of his front. Game for Swift was five. Smuffer gets a block from Swift inside the 40 to 39. Gain of three. It'll be third down and two. A great example of, of the right tackle six working. They forced that look like a sweep back to the inside to Wilson, number 55, and he shut it off. I mean, it turned out to be a two yard gain. It might have been a big one, but that's the way the defense works. So the Penn State's been live on the ground game. Much more than Maryland has, or at least been more successful at it. They now face a third and two at the Maryland 39. Strangle roll. Needs a couple blocks. He falls forward, and I believe he's got the first down. Yes, he does. Eric Wilson tripped him up. Strangled like he would not make it, but he managed to keep his feet long enough to get the dive in to get the first down by a foul and a half yard. I'd like to point out if some of the fans notice who's coming out there. They're pulling the center. When the center is uncovered like that, you can pull him because he has nobody on his head. And he's rolling out there with a center and guard in front with that option, as we said before, to run a pass. Knowing he needed short yardage, he went for the first down. Clock running, two minutes, 30 seconds to play in the first half. Penn State's eighth first down. They're at the Maryland 36. Strang, good protection. Throwing over the middle. It is incomplete. And almost intercepted on the rebound. Looked like the old immaculate reception play there for just a moment. Al Covington made the hit. And the ball bounced off something and somebody rebounded all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. Incomplete. Man, this is a bad decision by Strang. There's nothing but red and white jerseys around, as you will see. And uh, Penn State was very fortunate that Maryland didn't come up with the interception. That ball, once it pops up, it's up for grabs. A lot of people trying to grab it. 
close for an incomplete pass. Al Covington, the older brother of Keita Covington, the pass was intended for Herb Bellamy. Second down, 10, Penn State at the Maryland 36, 222 to play in the first half. Penn State leading 7 3. Again, good protection for Strang. Now he's going to be in trouble. He's going to be sacked. He throws it left handed, but they're going to rule that he was down. They're going to rule he was down in the grasp of Greg Thompson. We've seen Strang do that before and throw it left handed, and again, he got it out to Steve Smith left handed. But it will not count. It'll be called a sign. Well, the key to this, Maryland's able to put enough pressure on the four-man rush. You see Thompson 50 coming in. Now, the problem here, this puts Penn State out of field, though. Penn State will utilize a timeout. They will have two left. Two minutes, five seconds to play, and they will have third down and 16. Actually, that time, you really can't blame Penn State's offensive line because Strang had ample time to throw the ball. Good job by the secondary. Good defense by uh, Maryland's secondary. And uh, once again, D Dougie did not find an outlet receiver. I mean, when everybody's covered downfield and there's usually just a four-man rush or a three-man rush, you have a safety valve where you can dump the ball off. Penn State leading 7-3. to three. Some other scores from around the country. How about this? North Carolina State leading Georgia Tech 10-7. to seven. In the second quarter, Auburn and Mississippi tied at three in the second quarter. Pitt looking for their first win of the year leads East Carolina 14 nothing in the second quarter. Pitt is 0 and 4. That game being played at Pitt State in Missouri, leading Colorado 14 to nothing second quarter. Missouri lost a heartbreaker last week against Notre Dame. Missed it by a foot on that field goal attempt. With very little time on the clock. Colorado. You know, it hasn't been that long ago. They were a national power. You know, I believe it was 1971 when Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Colorado finished the top three teams in the country. And Colorado certainly has fallen on hard times. And uh, Colorado gave Penn State one of its worst trashers. This one, Penn State was really good in the late 60s and early 70s. They were great. Third down, 16. Penn State, the Maryland 44. They need at least 10 to try a field goal. Rocky Washington in motion. Strang. Waiting, 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 throwing over the middle. He's got Bellamy at the 20. Bellamy got the rounds at the 15 yard line. Sprague waiting for Bellamy to clear. Hits him for a big gain of 29 yards. First and 10 Penn State at the Maryland 15. Let me show you the difference here in patience. Now, he's got enough time to throw. Now, instead of no receivers open right now, instead of getting rid of, rid of the ball and forcing it, he allows Bellamy to cross on a crossing pattern to get free and puts it right there for a big first one. Uh, patience is a, is a big thing for quarterbacks. Uh, young quarterbacks are impatient. Doug Strang shows his, his experience on that play. Bellamy's third catch of the game, 60 yards on those three receptions. First and ten, Strang looking for the end zone. And it is caught by Siderling. He's out of bounds at the one inch line. Brian Siderling, a target for the third touchdown pass, picks up 14 yards and a Penn State first down. It'll be first and goal to go. Once again, a crossing pattern, and Strang allows the tight end to clear, and then he fires the ball right there. Down to about the six inch line. Strang now, six out of 12, 114 yards. He's hit his last two in a row. You see the ball placement, and now Maryland is going to call the timeout to set their defense. A lot of time left, a minute 50 to play in the first half. Maryland will use one of their timeouts. Basically, a quarterback in a sneak situation. Right? Strang has scored a touchdown in the quarterback sneak this year. Eric Wilson wanted to come over and talk to his defensive coaching staff. This has been the longest offensive possession by either team and the most successful. Penn State's touchdown drive is 44. This one, if consummated, would be 47. I can't emphasize enough the difference between hitting those passes. You mix up that blend of running and passing. And you get an entirely different offense. That's what they have right now in those two drives that they, you know, they get in now is some balance, which they haven't had since the second half of the game. From the Maryland standpoint, defensively, you've got a team third down and 16. They've done a good job against their pass. It's enough to make you tear your hair out. Well, they changed their patterns. Penn State's were trying to hit the curls early in the game. And now they've gone to crossing patterns. And the key was uh, Strang's patience to wait for the receivers to open up. Maryland came into the game with four quarterback sacks. They have two today. So they have exerted pretty good pressure. But the last two times, Strang has had more than ample time to throw. That time hitting Siberly on the crossing pattern. 
First down. Goal to goal. Well, just a few inches away. Power eye to the right. Tony Mumford, he did not get there. Great penetration by the Maryland front line. Excellent job by one of the quarterbacks, number two, Don Brown. He got in there untouched and really submarine the play. Penn State will use their second timeout. Actually, they lost yardage. Now, you see number two coming from the corner there, Brown. That's why I don't like that formation. That pretty, it allows the cornerback to come right up on the line of scrimmage and fire from the outside. And, you know, it's pretty tough to get a block on it. Now, he's supposed to read the, the end on his side in case the end releases for pass. But as soon as that end blocks down, he fires. And, uh, you know, it, it, it can be tough because you can't get a block on it. Donald Brown really made a nice play. Knifing in. And Penn State does lose almost a yard. Not quite. With a second down and goal, the ball just inside the one yard line. Penn State using their second time out, they have one left. See if Penn State gets out of that power eye. Donald Brown is a junior from Annapolis, Maryland. Great defensive play. Well, with everyone pitched in, George will make you the uh, offensive coordinator. You risk a wide play. You know, some people have the theory you don't run wide on short yarded situations. Well, the way they run wide plays now, the back has the option to take it inside or outside. I mean, to me, the best play is always to run the goal line is off tackle because you can get outside and still can find a crease the inside. Right up the middle over the guards, they stop. If they get out of that power line, they have a wing right. Second and goal from the one. And up inside the Manoa. And he didn't get there. Picked up some yard. But he did not get there. Eric Wilson, one of the co captains on this team, firing up his teammate. He had help from Greg Thompson, who has played a five game thus far. The game is about a foot. It'll be third down and goal. As I was finishing up, right inside the guards, as they stack it up, everybody gets their head down. That's why I feel off tackle is the best place to go. You might see strength come out on the keeper. We're back in the power line. Third down and goal. Inside the one. Strain Kuplak. Dives. Touchdown. Penn State. Doug Strain diving over from inside the one. Has scored Penn State's second touchdown of the game. See, Strain, when you start coming outside, you force movement. Movement forces openings to the inside. What he did. He followed the whole backfield, found a little daylight. Of course, he shows great aggressiveness right here. Leaps over Covington, gets into the touch. Uh, that's four setting he leaps over. A 235 pound linebacker. But when you move to the outside, you can find some creases. The only problem is you got to keep people from penetrating quickly. Yeah, it's a foul. That's the point. He's good. Penn State is about 47 yards for a touchdown. They lead it 14 to 3. Fawcett. To make the tackle, Strang said, what am I, a linebacker? I'm not going to fool with him. He's going over. Well, he had a little momentum because he was on a run, and also, as I said, he found a slight crack. That's all you need to make about a foot. George, is that dive available, for example, for a fact, because it appeared that the Maryland defensive lineman, their response was to submarine the That's exactly what they do. Now, well, everybody inside, they, they just give themselves up to make sure you can't just buy the quarterbacks and then, you know, just run straight ahead. Uh, go ahead, straight ahead play. So therefore, if you get to the off tackle hole, block people down, and nobody gets immediate penetration, when you get thrown for yards, you got a good chance of finding a crack and get home. Maryland really put on a nice defensive stand, although they give it the touchdown eventually. A 47-yard drive, 10 plays, 2 minutes 53 seconds, consummated by Strange, one-yard quarterback leap, as it were. But the two key plays were a third and 16, 29-yard pass completion to Bellamy, and then a 14-yard to Cyberling, which got the ball down inside the one-yard line. Key to Covington will be back from Maryland. Massimo Anka will kick. Now there's exactly one minute to play. Maryland has two timeouts left. Let's see if Manka kicks deep or tries to squint. Maryland has a great field goal kicker in Jess Atkinson. Manka kicks away and how does the effort? It bounces in the end zone. So that should bring it back to the 20 and not the 30. New rule in college football, if it goes over the end line, it would come out to the 30. No, they are bringing it out to the 30 yard line. That's what Covington was doing, number one. And that's a heads up play by Covington. He alerted to the official to the, the fact that the new rule is, uh, brings the ball out to the 30. I don't know if we can get a replay on that or not. 
see where the ball hit again if it bounces on the end line or of course over the end line it comes out to the 30 and that is important. Ray Bauer signifying the first down from the 30 yard line is important because Maryland really can hope for a field goal here and that's a big 10 yard. So the Terrapins do have a minute to play obviously no time off the clock Blitz up the middle a pass intended for the tight end. Ron Fazio, Trey Bauer, inside linebacker number 35, came out of blitz up the middle and really forced Gelbaugh to hurry his throw because if, the, if he doesn't, Fazio's wide open. Well, that's what's known as getting in clean. Nobody touched him, and uh, Gelbaugh did a good job just getting rid of the ball. And Gelbaugh had his man open because Fazio went to the spot that Bauer came from. You see Gelbaugh's stats. He now faces second and ten. He'll throw again. In the flat. It's a nice block and gets out to the 40 yard line. And a Maryland first down. Shane Conlin and Lance Hamilton make the tackle, but the gain is 10. The clock stops on the movement of the chains, which are now being moved, as you see. First down and 10. 47 seconds to play in the half. Maryland has not had to use a timeout yet in the drive after an incompletion in the first down. Now the clock begins to run. And we've got whistles. Movement at the line of scrimmage and flags all over. Clock reading 44 seconds. I think it was the tight end that moved uh, prematurely. Fazio or Knight? Uh, I, think so. I think it was Knight, 85. Dead ball foul. It'll cost Maryland five Fazio. yards. Dead ball. Move it back to the 35 and make it first down and 15. And that previous play that they hit out in the flat there, that's a read screen, they call it. They release three linemen and the quarterback reads the linebacker. The linebacker comes up, they throw a curl. The linebacker drops off for the curl, they throw that screen. The clock begins to roll again. And again, we've got a problem. And what has happened here effectively is that Maryland has lost seven seconds off the clock and have not yet been able to get a playoff. And they lost a 10 time, 10 yards at the game on that quick Seconds and 10 yards later, we pick up at the point we were at. But again, they have lost yardage. Maryland has penalized four times, and Penn State has yet to be flagged. 40 seconds to play, first half, Penn State leading Maryland 14 3. Now, Bobby Ross on the sideline is questioning why the clock was moving. And the official is explaining that. In college football, after a penalty, the clock starts when the ball is set. Not like the pros where it starts when the ball snapped. I think he's concerned about why his team is jumping offside. I mean, well, the referee can't tell him. But <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that. Uh, you no, know, they're putting now. They're putting four the, seconds back on the clock. He might also be saying that Penn State is calling their starting count. Sometimes in situations like that, one defensive player. Uh, gets onto your rhythm and your starting count. That could have something that sounds like it, causing the offense to jump offside. I don't think that was the case here, but the, the reason there is, George, because now they're putting 47 seconds, and I'll tell you why. The ball was never snapped, and of course, when they started the series, the clock was stopped uh, after the uh, kickoff. So that's why the 47 seconds is back on the clock. And Coach Ross was correct. Yes, he was. But it is still first down and 20. Gelbaugh flushed out. Fires the sideline incomplete. Looking on the near sideline for Badonic, but he kind of threw that one away. It'll bring up second down and 20. The play took eight seconds to run. 39 seconds left. Bob White, from his defensive end position, put the big rush on Gelbaugh, who is now six out of 16 for 57 yards. Second and 20. Maryland. Their own 30. They have 39 seconds to try to move to field goal position. That's Greg Hill, number four, wide to the right, the bottom of your screen. Gelbaugh fires wide up the middle for a first down. At the Penn State 48, he is Abdul Raouf. And he was wide open. The clock stops with 35 seconds to play. 
Maryland does not use a timeout. The clock stops and moves into the change. They'll start it momentarily. And it is a first down. The game, 22 yards. Now ball looking sideline. Incomplete. That time, looking for Hill. Sidner was over there on the coverage. Well, Penn State's making, mixing up their defenses. And one time they rush with three or four. Next time they're coming with six or, or seven. Uh, this is tough for a quarterback to, to diagnose late in the, in the game like this. We only got a few seconds. So it becomes a guessing game. Well, the field, of course, has shrunk just a little bit for Maryland and also for the Penn State defense. What do you do here, George? You lay back and play a bit more pass defense or still send some linebackers? Well, they don't want to get caught on a blitz where they get hit for a touchdown. Uh, they want to keep the ball in front of them here. And they they the the, the, the rest. Pass thrown to a flat, and it is incomplete. Pass underthrown again, attributable to the Penn State rush. John Bonato was the intended receiver, number 20. They'll bring up third down and 10, Maryland. At the Penn State 48, 24 seconds to play. Maryland still has two timeouts. One additional comment, Stan. You know, you don't always have to sack the passer to have a good pass rush. If you break his rhythm down or you get a good push or you, you put enough pressure on him to break the timing of the receivers downfield and his timing, that's a good pass rush. That's good pressure. And they were able to do it really with only one linebacker coming. The front four with Don Gennetti, number 46, and left defensive end. Really able to put some pressure on Gelbar. Here comes our linebacker blitz with Conlon. He's chasing, he throws him. He's incomplete and almost intercepted by Don Graham. We've got a flag down, and we're going to get roughing the passer. Well, he threw that ball. Well, oh, he's he trying to throw the ball and dump it off the 73 spot. The 300 pound tackle, Marvo. It's going to be intentional grounding. That was the signal that the official gave. First, he signified a personal foul. They're going to call it intentional grounding, which, by the way, is also a loss of down, so it'll be fourth down. Uh, I would have been interested to see what Mario would have done with the ball if he caught it, because he's 301 pounds. I get a kick out of why they put the one there, and then let's just say he's 300 pounds. I wouldn't like it. Right? Pass. Intentional grounding. Loss of down. down. Wait a second. Wait a second. Turn off your mic, Ray, or you're going to get everybody in a lot of trouble. 20 seconds to play in the half. Ray Isom back deep. I doubt he will handle the football. Wright will kick it away. Again, the intentional grounding of the forward pass has a loss of down. Isom will just let it hit. As Penn State went for the block. He rolls dead about the 23-yard line. Only nine seconds to play in the half. Penn State went for the block on the punt. Maravell. Branch from Notre Dame. He does weigh 300 pounds. He's from Rutherford, New Jersey. And I wonder how he got into the shadow of Giant Stadium. Oh, he's six foot six. And, uh, they got some other big people on that team. They a few people who go about 280. Uh, Edwards is 282. That's a big football team. Penn State will not play any team with it. Penn State with nine seconds to play in the first half. With a 14 to three lead, it can be presumed they will just sit on it, go to the half with their 11 point halftime lead. Tony Mumford up the middle, across the 25, and out to the 20. And that will do it for the first half of play. Eight and then. Ball now makes a tackle for Maryland, and we have finished the first 30 minutes of football. Penn State and Maryland at Beaver Stadium. That's the end of the first half. The score, Penn State 14, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. It's a closer game than the score indicates. Uh, Penn State, Maryland with the interception leading to a field goal, taking over the 42 after the interception. But as you see, they have not been able to drive after that. Significant play was the fumble. They had a first down in Penn State territory about the 40 yard line and gave it up. For Penn State, the interception led to the Maryland field goal, punt, and then the two touchdown drives again, 44 yards and 47 yards. Each team has been saddled with a turnover. The interception led to a Maryland field goal. And the Penn State uh, fumble 
uh, recovery stopped Maryland for a good drive. Georgia Tech and NC State tied at 21 all in the third quarter. Mississippi leading Auburn. How about that? 10 to 3 in the second quarter. Texas Tech leading Texas A&M. A&M is 3 and 0. 10 to 6 at the half. Texas Tech a game played at College Station. Pitt, after jumping out to the early lead, has managed to hang on to a 14 nothing lead over East Carolina at the half. Florida leads Syracuse. Interesting game there. Florida. Three to nothing lead over Syracuse the first quarter. Interesting to see how Syracuse rebounds from that big upset over Nebraska. Missouri hammering Colorado 21 to 3. Michigan State leading Michigan. How about that in Ann Arbor? 7 0 in the second quarter. North Carolina and Clemson in an ACC game. Important to Maryland, certainly. Scoreless in the second quarter. Maryland will receive to begin the second half. We mentioned earlier, Maryland. On first down plays has passed the ball seven times. They've only completed one, whereas Penn State on 13 first down plays has passed only once. Well, they have a, they have been inconsistent with their balance. They got to get a little bit more out of their running game. And uh, as far as Penn, Penn State's passing, uh, Penn State has had receivers open, you know, the whole first half. Uh, a couple of balls were dropped, and then he was trying to miss a couple, and he hit the big ones, which uh, gave him the lead. Covington has returned one kick today for 25 yards. He'll get a shot at this one, taking it a seven. Rather short kick. Looking up the middle. Gets across the 20 and out to the 21 yard line. So only a 14 yard return for Keita Covington. Maryland takes over. First and 10 from their own 21 to begin the second half. Rogers Alexander made the tackle. He had help from Drew Bykoski. Maryland, talk about scheduling. They have uh, played the last three national champions. Clemson, Penn State. Their schedule is uh, loaded, as they would say. First and 10. This is Alvin Blount. Got a good hole. Gets across 25 to the 27. It'll be a gain of six. Second down and four. Mike Russo and Carmen Mash Antonio made the tackle. Just underway in the second half. Penn State leading 14 to 3. Maryland had good success running the ball and kind of went away from it, George. Well, you know, they have one of the biggest offensive lines in the country, and uh, again, they, they want to establish something and get some rhythm. Oh. Second and four out of the pro set. Tommy Neal now, the running back with Badonic. And this is Badonic. Gets out to the 30 and the 31 and very close to the first down. I believe he's got it. That time that was a different formation. They went a twins to the wide side of the field and they shifted their one of their backs to a power set, who was the lead backer, and then pitched the ball to Vadonic. Uh, and uh, the lead backer sealed off the inside linebacker, and Vadonic made a nice game. Here's Doug Stray. Six out of 12 in the first half. And the one touchdown pass. First and 10 Maryland outside their own 31. Again, it is Neal and Badonic in the backfield. Hell ball pass. Fires the sideline, almost intercepted. Greg Hill with the catch. Mike Zordich bumped him out of bounds. Well, he really fires us, but he took a chance. Uh, Penn State jumped their defense at the last minute. Zordich is underneath there, almost comes up with the interception, but the ball was so well thrown. It became a completion. Got a good, strong arm. Zordich made the gamble. Not really much of a gamble. He knew he had help. Second and two. Tommy Neal fighting for the first down. Maybe short. Tommy Neal will stop by Shane Conlon. Shane Conlon over the tackle. Defense about a yard back and 
Ben with Badonic behind you, you're going to get an easy win at two. You allow him to turn up field. He gets one on one with a cornerback yeah, or even a safety, and he can knock you over. He, he does what we call finish off the run real well. He really puts it to you. See the difference in this play selection on first down. Maryland has moved from their own 21 out to the 47. Gelbaugh in trouble. Now he gets it away and overthrows Greg Hill. Had to throw it on the run again caused by the Penn State rush. Pass incomplete for Hill, covered by Sidner. It'll be second down and 10. And that was a four-man rush. There was a first down, good passing down. They faked up inside. There's a beauty for you. Guy too. Is that one of those cabbage patch dolls? That doll's worth more than your watch. That's true. I got mine out of a cereal box. Second and ten. Maryland, their own 47. Abdul Raouf, motion far side. Outside blitz by Penn State. Yelbach throws, got his man. Close to a first down. Penn State 44. He'll be a bit short. The pass complete. The Bonato. Well, this is the time we talked about that read screen. This time he sees the linebacker coming up and goes to the curl man to Bonato. Really fires it. Good coverage, but just a well thrown ball. Just a good job by Stan Gelbaugh. Good pattern run by Bonato, but he threw it right in there because Zornick came up quickly. The gain is nine. It'll be third down in the run. Maryland seven out of 12 on third down conversion. Again, that tight formation with a tight end in motion. We got a flag down. The Doc was had the first down. And we've been having a legal motion call. I believe it gets Maryland, which would make it a third and six. Well, I tell you, Penn State has been getting hurt in that defense against this power type formation because there was a crack there. And he almost got so clean. Markov will go against Maryland. They're ball foul. A little procedure, this white offense. See if we can spot the Gilly party. You see it right on the very edge of the right hand portion of your screen. It was probably the left tackle, Tony Edwards. So now it's in a third and short, it's third and six, and probably Maryland will have to throw. Young Bob in the flat, overthrow. The pass intended for his tight end, Farrell Edwards, number 93. The pass a bit too tall, and so the penalty cost Maryland the first down and a big gain on the Donix run and then forced the Terrapins to punt. Penn State's been uh, down four, uh, putting a lot more pressure just by themselves in the second half. Darrell White, the punt, Penn State sends receivers back, three of them. Woods and Isom are the deep men, right averaging a freshman, his first college game averaging 42 yards per kick. They'll let it bounce, and it'll be down. Touched by Maryland outside the 10-yard line, and they will mark it at the 13-yard line. Or perhaps the Maryland player with that kind of coverage around it should have let it go and got in a deeper spot. Eddie Schultz down the ball. We've got 11.28 to play, third quarter. There's a timeout in the action to score. Penn State 14, Maryland 3. We'll be back right after this. Head coach Joe Paterno, as Penn State tries to increase their winning streak over Maryland to 20 in a row. The teams have met 27 times. The record Penn State 26 wins. Maryland only one, and they do have 19 in a row. Penn State, their first off offensive possession of the second half, starting out just shy of their own 14. Pitch wide to Tony Mumper gets a good block from Smith, but there's good pursuit by Maryland. Mumper's only able to get a yard. It'll be second down to nine. Tom Parker makes the tackle. Maryland's front four has really done a good job. Well, Stan, there are four defensive tackles playing, and again, that was a good classic example of the wide tackle six. Penn State put two receivers out to one side of the field, hoping that the Maryland defense would drop the defensive end off and give them a little running room. They did not, and there was no place to go. We talked about Penn State's winning streak over Maryland. Bobby Ross has never lost a game in October while in Maryland. Sprang in a roll, backside pressure, he cuts up, hit hard at the 20. Perhaps got near the 21 yard line. It'll be a gain of six and bring up third down and three. Greg Thompson and Al Covington made the tackle for Maryland. Now there you see the flak jacket as Strang's jersey was lifted up. He has a rip problem. 
Yeah, it's not a bruise, but rather pulled muscles in his ribs that impedes his throwing or causes him pain when he throws. Well, we had a long talk with Joe, and they feel possibly he might have altered his uh, throwing uh, mechanics a little bit, but you know, no, he's a gutty kid. He wouldn't say anything about it. Third down and three. Penn State five out of eight on third down conversion. Here's a delayed draw, and this is not going to gain much at all. He's near the 24 yard line. That's where he needed to get for the first down. Eric Wilson made the tackle. It's a matter of the spot. I think they'll have to call for the measurement. Pretty close. And that was a fullback counter play. Uh, you see the first down marker is just shy of the 24. That's where the ball is spotted. It's going to be very, very close. Looks like he's a couple inches short, but you really can't tell from this angle. Pictures worth a thousand words. I said a couple inches. How about one? Well, the ball had a shorter nose. It would be four thousand. They're going to go for it. It's a first down. Oh, they made the first. They gave him the first. Oh, I gave him the first. Gave him the first down. So Penn State picks up the first down. It is their first of the second half. And this down. Ball just shy of the 24. Mumford and Smith behind Strand. Mumford. Over right tackle across the 25 and up near the 27 yard line. Give Mumford three. That'll make it second down and seven yards to go. Mumford now 46 yards on 12 carries. Chuck Foss said and Eric Wilson make the tackle for Maryland. Well, the way Maryland has had difficulty getting a sustained drive together, a Penn State drive here resulting in a touchdown would really make the comeback run very long and arduous for Maryland. Plus, they're reading up the clock also. Nine minutes, ten seconds to play, third quarter. Penn State leading 14-3. Steve Smith, the fullback, tries to get outside. Cuts up. But again, Maryland really attacks the perimeter well. And they stop. Smith for perhaps a gain of a yard. It'll be third down and around six. Scott Shankweiler, key to Covington in the left corner, make the tackle on Smith. Third down and again around seven yards to go for the first down. Awfully tough to get outside against that defense. It's interesting how they want to follow things up the middle, but they really handle the perimeter very well in the running game. Strang is six out of 12, 114 yards, one touchdown. Washington in motion. And roll. He's hit from behind and he'll be dropped from the 25 yard line. He was looking for Rocky Washington, but there was good man to man coverage on the play by Keita Covington. Washington was never open. And Strang, while he was looking, was hit from behind by Ted Chapman. Dave Amen, defensive end, is down. That's him, number 77, a freshman from Baltimore. They only got hit from the backside, too. That's the way to stop that. They forced from the front. Strang had a pull up, and Chapman came from behind 100 miles an hour. They were fortunate he didn't fumble that football. I'm in being talked to by the Maryland medical staff. When we resume, John Bruno will be called upon to punt for Penn State. Keita Covington will be a single safety back near his own 35 yard line. Bruno has had a good day. Had three punts up until now, averaging 47 yards. You see, Ahmed is in great pain as he's helped off. I kind of think he got a helmet in the back. Carmen Antonio is snapping for Penn State. Mike Stillman normally does that, but you remember that Stillman was cliffed early in the game and has not been back. So Bruno will kick away. Token rush, it's low, it's deep, but it's low. Covington at his 28, looks for the wall on the outside. Ooh, he's hit hard at the 36 yard line. Rogers Alexander again has just done a spectacular job on special teams. He really stuck coming to there. 81 to play in the third quarter. And the timeout of the action scores. And they push the middle of three.
linebacker Rogers Alexander from Riverdale Maryland someone ought to put a license plate on him. You know Stan every coach in the country that teaches uh, specialty teams would like to get a picture of this because there's an alleyway there there's a hole and watch Rogers Alexander number 95 come up and hit the back number one Covington. I mean that is a hit. First down Maryland their own 35 yard line. Terrapins. Move on the offensive line. Got ball on the wall. Fires got a man wide open in the flat. And it's Padonic. He's got a big hole in the 40. 35. Inside the Penn State 35. And down to the Penn State 30 yard line. Zornich and Hamilton finally brought him down. But Padonic got an alleyway on the far sideline. That has to be broken coverage, Stan. Nobody gets out that clean. That's a little counter bootleg. Now watch Ford. He's Padonic facing the line. And they take over to Swamp number 33. And Gallagher rolls out. Now there's nobody anywhere near, anywhere near number 40 Padonic. He makes a nice run out of it. Has to be broken back. Now over the first down to Penn State 31. Here is the give inside. And this time Padonic is really buried at the line of scrimmage. Don Gennetti, defensive end, hit him hard. Give him a gain of perhaps one. It'll be second down and nine. And Donick is shaking up on that play. And then he really gave him a stick. But the question is, George, were the wide receivers on the previous play used to clear out the area, or is Padonic a safety down there? Well, not necessarily so. No, the, the, the play is drawn up for him. He's the primary receiver. That's a, a little bit of fakery there, but a linebacker is usually responsible for that back snow down. Second down and nine. Padonic comes out. Looks like he's shoulder. Short drop by Gelbaugh, throws out the flat, got his man Greg Gell, makes a great move, 20, 15, and he's run out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Ray Ison pushed him out of bounds, but he put the good one-on-one -on -one move on the corner and picked up an extra seven, eight yards. Again, pro, pro offense, he saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage, Sidna on Hill, checked it off, lost a quick out, quick hitch as they caught. Now Sidna has to be careful here, the better off time tackling a man like this high. Somebody's got a lot of movements in open field. He almost took it up. Ball spotted at the 13 yard line. First down and 10. Now we'll start the drive at their own 35. Now uh, Edwards a tight end, shift sides. Badonic, by the way, is back in the game. This is Badonic. Gets a good block, cuts inside, and gets down to the 10 yard line. Sidner was in position to make the tackle, but an excellent job by one of the guards knocked down the man at the line of scrimmage and enabled Padonic to pick up four yards, second and six. Deepest penetration of the ball game for Maryland. They come out of the slot right. A lot of speed out there. He's chased, gets away, throws, and rolls, almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Mike Zornich. The pass intended for Eric Holder. Zornich almost had the interception. Give credit to Bob White, who chased Gelb on the backfield. You're right, Stan. The rush is what you know, caused the incomplete pass and the almost interception. You see White get in there from the inside. Gelb takes a chance. Zornich steps in front. We got to intercept those. He would have taken it the wrong way. Now Maryland faced with third and six at the Penn State 12-yard line. Wouldn't be surprised to see that little blue lane play again. But Donna can jump behind him. Gelbach, he's hit as he throws. He's got it out to his left of five. And down to the one-yard line is the tight end, Farrell Edmonds. It'll be to Maryland, first down. Gelbach took the hit and got the pass away. A great effort. Once again, though, Stan, I you know there's no coverage out there. No. catch of the day, sixth on the season. That was a big play. He was wide open. Gelbar really took a shot. Now Maryland is in business. First and goal at the Penn State one. Well, and McDonough. Short motion. McDonough does not get in. Penn State rising up off the line of scrimmage. Shane Conlon made the 
the initial hit along with Chris Sidney. This is a great defensive play. It looked like Bogdanovich had it. You'll see second ever defense on Bogdanovich's part. But Shane Conlon refuses it. He refuses to let him go. Sidney finishes it off. Conlon is a big hitter, but you see how strong Bogdanovich is. They needed Sidney to come in to keep him out of the end zone. He gained a couple inches. It'll be second down. Goal. The one yard line. Got it. Met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Again, Shane Conlon and Chris Sidner will help him Ray Ison make the big hit. It is third down and goal from the one. Tiny Green was in there too, number 53. That's just excellent defense. He lost about a few inches on that. was a great stand so far. As Maryland did the same thing to Penn State. Penn State able to score on third and goal. He did lose a few inches. The ball right at the one yard line. It is third and goal. Now maybe here is your roll. Kevin Walker is the ring man in motion. Pitch wide. Badonic touchdown, Maryland. They went to the wide side, and Badonic takes it in from the one. A 65 yard touchdown drive by the Maryland Terrapins, and they are back in business. And Maryland. I believe we'll go for the two-point conversion. They put the man in motion, and they just took a quick pitch to Badonic. He took it to the outside, caught Penn State's defense to the inside. Penn State was looking for the short yardage play inside. Badonic takes it outside. He has an option to go inside, outside. Good call. Speaking of options, Maryland has exercised those to move the ball to the far side hash mark because they're going for two. It makes sense. If they get the two, they'll be able to field goal down. So now the two-point conversion. Holder motion. Pitch wide to Donick. He breaks a tackle. He's in there. Rick Badonic broke a tackle by Shane Conlon and powered his way into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Four minutes, nine seconds to play in the game. There's a timeout in the action. The score. Penn State 14, Maryland 11. We'll be back right after this. Harry's American Bar on the Island. You know what they use in their daiquiris? Collins, sours, pina coladas, margaritas, and bloody marys? Daily's cocktail mixes. Same goes for the Durrell Country Club in Miami. Lots of snazzy places use Daily's. Well, they use Daily's cocktail mixes in that place. Every drink takes <laughs> every time. For your next step together, pick up some Daily's cocktail mixes. Excuse me. two-point conversion and were successful. Oh, you see this now. Penn State's in the right defense. Conlon guesses right. It's a pitch out to Badonic, similar to the touchdown play. Watch Conlon come in, gets a good shot at him. But we said he's strong. 5'9, 225. Mash Antonio gets a shot at him too, and he takes it in for the two points. Well done. Jess Atkinson to kick to Tony Mumford and Kevin Woods. Kick is high, but returnable. Woods is one yard line. The 20. Spies, well, you get the 20, the 15 yard line. So good coverage by Maryland, and they are charged up. Now, here at George in the first half, Maryland now marching 65 yards. Big play, a pass to Badonic. He scored the touchdown and a two point conversion. But really, Maryland's offense relatively dormant in the first half. All of a sudden, they come out, boom, boom, boom. Well, I don't know if it's so much their offense. They're playing much better with a lot of intensity, but Penn State made two defensive lapses. They let Badonic get wide open in the flat. And down there at the goal line, when they had him third and about eight, Edmonds, the tight end, just ran a diagonal to the sidelines, and nobody covered him. Tony Mumford picks his way out to the 19 yard line. Mumford will pick up four to make it second down and six. So now there is indeed pressure 
on the Penn State offense. They have driven for two touchdowns on drives of 44 and 47 yards. They were not able to do much in their first offensive possession. Now they have a lead that has shrunk to three points. They are under pressure to move the ball. Second down, six yards to go. Penn State, their own 19-yard line. Mumford again. And short down is across the 20 and off to the 22. It'll be third down, three yards to go for a first down. You know, still in the Texas, Mumford and uh, Strang bumped together, causing a fumble. It almost happened there again. And you notice, you know, Strang stumbled. Uh, Mumford bumped into him again. He's got, he's got to be careful. I think Penn State has to again go back to the pass. They don't put any drives. They really haven't done much passing wise. In fact, they haven't thrown a pass. They've attempted one, but Strang was sacked on the play. Third down and three, and if Maryland can hold here, they'd have all the momentum in the world, plus good field position. Washington in motion to the near side. Strang breaks a hit. He throws, got a man wide open. The pass is caught at the 45 yard line. Tony Mumford had a turn around for it, but he's all the way down to the 42. And there was good coverage on the play, but the defender did not look at the ball. Mumford did. What happened here? This is a little bit of a break for Penn State now. It's, it's a good adjustment by Strang. He ducks under the rush here and lays the ball out. Then Mumford makes a great adjustment on the ball. The defensive back turned his back, lost sight of where the ball was, and the receiver had the advantage and made the catch. Scott Shankweiler was the man who was on the blitz and missed the tackle. And Wilson was the man who was covering Tony Mumford. First and 10, 37 yard game. Strang to throw again. Off the flat, he's got his man. Team Domenio, the tight end, drives his way. Down to the 23-yard line. Well, Penn State picks up another first down, a 19-yard gain. Joe Cross, right corner, made the tackle. Well, straight drop by pass. First down, good time to throw. It's the tight end on a diagonal right out to the flat. Nobody covers him. Good run by Domenio. Well, Penn State hasn't scored yet, but they are showing some character. Maryland, of course. Challenging them with their touchdown and two point conversion, they come right back. Strang, 8 out of 14, 167 yards. First and 10 for the 23. Mumford. Up the middle, 50. He's down the 11 yard line. Another Penn State first down. Well, once they loosen things up, they're really going to rip it through. Joe Krause and Chuck Fossett made the tackle. Yeah, I don't know if we can see that replay. It's a great ball. They put Hamilton in motion, and that's a counter. One of the linebackers moved with Hamilton in motion. They ran a counter trap right back up that hole where that linebacker left. He almost did it. Penn State, three consecutive first downs. Football, they're on the 22 yard line. They've already moved it on three plays down to the 11. First down and 10. They can get a first down, not a touchdown. No, no. It's down to the nine yard line, gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. They can get just inside the one yard line for a first and goal. Fawcett and Kevin Donis make the tackle for the Terps. And that's very important because this has a lot to do how you call your plays. They still can get a first down inside the one yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Bobby Ross. 18 and 10. Two consecutive bowl trips as he's come to Maryland from the Citadel and the Kansas City Chiefs. Tony Mumford of the 1,000 yard mark and career rushing the 20th such Penn State running back to do so. Strang looking end zone. Mumford incomplete. He comes out of bounds and he caught him at all. Uh, he's got a flag on the play. He didn't see Manoa number 44 circle out. Nobody was on. on the There's a flag down. And it's going against Maryland. Penn State has not been penalized in this game. Maryland has been hurt by them tremendously. That's a big, another big break for Penn State. They are getting more than their share of the breaks. This is a great opportunity for Strang to take it on that rollout type of situation where he's got the option to run a pass. That's been their most, one of their most successful plays. Well, it's going to move the ball from the nine down to the four yard line. And again, Stan, it's so vitally important that they can still get another the first down down there by the uh, They're holding against the defense. While the ball is in the air. Second down. The five yards marched off the down remains the same. Obviously, Penn State accepting that is the sudden penalty on Maryland for 57 yards. 
And even though they've been short penalties, they've really come at bad times from Maryland. Remember, they had a third down and one. They got a motion penalty and they had a punt. They're like faces on balls, they'll kill you. Second down, four yards for the first down, about four and a half for the touchdown. Cody Mumford hit at the line of scrimmage, driven back, he'll lose a yard. A delay to Tony Mumford, and now Penn State will have third down and five. Kevin Donis and Greg Thompson, and Thompson's played a great game. Uh, this is a tailback count, and they pull the guard in the tackle, but Donis just came from the corner position, outside linebacker position, and knifed in before the play developed. Again, I think, you know, the rollout uh, type of play, play action is it would be good here because quarterback would have the option of the runoff play. Third down and five for the first down, five and a half for the touchdown. Rocky Washington motion far side. There's the boot. Strang looking, throwing in the end zone. Incomplete. Herb Bellamy thought he had a good catch and he would have had a first down, but it's incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down and five, and Penn State will have to go for the field goal. That's a great defensive stand by Maryland. I think if Strang would like to get that one back because if he, he could have ducked up inside of the contain, I think it maybe would have run that for him for the uh, touchdown. I also think the contain man really got across the line of scrimmage very quickly, and that really destroyed everything on the play. Well, I think they anticipated well. It was a good defensive move. Nick Gansitano will attempt the, extra, uh, the field goal. He is five out of six and 24 straight from inside the 40. This one, 23 yards. The kick is up. The kick is good. So Gansitano with a 23-yard field goal has extended Penn State's lead, but only to six points. Maryland with a touchdown. And that was the final play of the third quarter. The score at the end of three quarters, Penn State 17, Maryland 11. We'll be back right after this. The first play of the fourth quarter will be the Penn State kickoff. Massimo Mankin kicking deep to Keita Covington. You see the total yard is extremely close. Most of the clubs doing their damage on the passing game. Covington on his one yard line comes up the middle. The 20 hit hard at the 20 and goes forward to about the 22 yard line. Marcus Henderson, a freshman from Aliquippa, makes the tackle on the special teams. Keita Covington urging his offensive teammates on. Maryland with their most impressive drive in the third quarter of the ball game, a 65-yard touchdown drive to get them to 14 to 11 on the last play of the third quarter. Nick Gantzano, a 23-yard field goal. Penn State's lead is six after 17 to 11. First down. There's the Penn State field goal drive. First down. Maryland, their own 22, trailing by six. Just underway in the fourth quarter. And we got moving. Farrell Edmonds, the tight end, jumped offside. And again, Maryland is hit with another motion penalty. Dead ball, and there it is. Dead ball is trying to uh, put him over. That happens sometimes. Well, well that's a good point, George. Uh, is it possible that changing quarterbacks have been resultant in all these motion penalties? Well, it's very possible. Everybody pulls the starting count with a different type of rhythm, their voice sounds differently, whatever. But when you do a lot of audibleizing, that's one of the dangers. First down and 15. Maryland starts throwing 17 yard line in the eye. One of the few times that they shift out of it. Yellow ball looking sideline. That's complete to Hill and dropped. Incomplete. Hill was popped by Chris Sidner. The game of going three. It's incomplete. They bring up second down and 15 yards to go. Yellow ball now. 12 out of 29 for only, well, for 158 yards, most of it coming on the last drive. A key defensive play for Penn State in this ball game right now, but that's the way a cornerback's got to play a guy like Hill. Just, you got to be all over him. You cannot let him catch the ball and turn up field, you know, ready to run on. Well, on the last drive, that's exactly what happened. Sidner laid off, and he made a great move on him. Pick up a first down near the 15-yard line. Second and 10. Looks Penn State, but Gelbo will roll out of it. Looking fine and throws it incomplete. A dangerous throw. He was looking for Edmonds. He's kind of threw that one up there. It was like a jump ball. He's trying to throw it over the linebackers here in front of Edmonds. You'll see it here. Penn State will come from a, with a blitz on the left side. 
which which forces him out of pocket. You see a little bit Garrett, 99, came on a, a little bit of a game. He's trying to pick up Edmonds. Morgan is trying to contain. He does a good job. He's been double teamed. Now there's a linebacker in front of Edmonds. He tries to get the ball over. And I think somebody got a hand on Morgan. his wrist. Morgan. Great job by Morgan. So that's why the pass looked like the proverbial wounded duck. Incomplete. And now third down and 15. Let's see if Penn State comes with a blitz. They do not. Yalbaugh looking, firing over the middle. Incomplete and almost intercepted. And it is intercepted by Penn State. Off the tip. Now Sidner comes up with the football. But it was Rodgers Alexander who tipped it up in the air. Uh, you know, two good plays by two great players, but Chris Sidney gets better with each game. Now, you will see, this is the way a cornerback is supposed to play recklessly here. He has coverage on his man. As soon as he saw the ball pop, you see a lot of pressure. Russo, 67, gets in clean by himself. It wasn't a pass rush. Alexander makes a diving flush for the ball, hits his fingertips, and then Sidney makes a fantastic play. Great right after. They were looking for Edmonds, the tight end, but Alexander, who's played a magnificent game today, broke it up. Sidney with the interception, the second of the year. Schrein, looking, firing deep over the middle line. Oh, no, no, it's a Penn State touchdown. Tony Mumford. Touchdown, Penn State. A 32-yard touchdown pass. Well, Stan, you know, we said at the beginning of the show, we were repeating it. It's a tough defense to run consistently against. But you can throw the football against it. This, this month, the number 12 circling out of the backfield. Once again, Strang takes his time, gets a lot of height on the ball. Mumford has to turn around and go back to it. That's how wide open he was. Apparently, some busted coverage, too, by the American defense. A little different angle. He tried to nurse that ball in there. Maybe he should have thrown a little harder, and he got lucky that the coverage was so bad and Mumford was so wide open. Now, Penn State will go for two points because the two-point conversion would make it 25 to 11, putting Maryland 14 points behind, forcing them to get two touchdowns and at least two conversions to tie. The official lead will be a 27-yard touchdown pass. Swaying to Mumford, and they'll try for two. It's Mumford in motion. Swaying, throwing in the end zone. Good! Herb Bellamy gets the two-point conversion. And there's a flag down. You get a lot of holding in plays like this, and there's a possibility that's what it is. The discussion oh. going on, and it was against Maryland. Obviously, Penn State will decline. He saw Jerome Wilson tackle number 75 raise his hands. Here's the call. Takes him one play, a timeout of the action, 14-33 to go in the game. The score, Penn State 25, Maryland 11. We'll be back in a moment. Forget everything you want to do. And get to the point of sport. Get ready for Edge Extra Jam. The extraordinary value of the 30% value of the things in the game. Get extra value of the things in the game. So now what you're watching, shouldn't you choose Sony? Otherwise, who knows what you might miss? The penalty on the two-point conversion will be assessed on the kickoff. So Penn State will kick off from the 50. And here again is the two-point conversion pass to Bellamy. Bellamy makes a nice adjustment on the ball. These young receivers are starting to get the feel of the game. Watch him come back to the game. Loses his man. 
Here's the kick, and as suspected, it is a squibber. Whoa! Ball bounces loose and is loose near the 20 yard line. Maryland has recovered. Somebody reached out and just tried to snag it. You know, Stan, just before the kickoff, I was thinking to myself, team gets the benefit of a 10 yard penalty, but if the kid kicks the ball out of the end zone, they lose it right away. Comes so to the third. It changes the, con you know, the, the strategy of the kicking game a bit that you have to have a, a squid kick in there. Sean Scott was the man who came up with the uh, football. And Maryland gets it at the 20 yard line. They now trail by 14 points, 25 11. Patonic looks outside, 25. Boy, is he tough. Mm. He punishes people. Lance Hamilton made the tackle and uh, is paying the price as he gets up slowly. He's only 225, but he bench presses over 400. I mean, that's over twice his weight practically. Uh, Russo had a shot on him, but this is what we call finishing off a run. He, he attacks the defender right at the last minute. That's he lets called, you know he's dead. That's called finishing off a quarterback is what that's called. Boy, he is tough. Obviously a low center of gravity and really a tough kid. Game's about eight second and two. Gelbaugh pressured, fires, and it is batted away behind the receiver. Bob Anko knocked it away. It was intended for, intended for Tommy Neal. Anko again with the pressure it'll be third down or make it second down excuse me in 10 yards to go. That was a little good a bit of defensive strategy there as soon as he got back at outside of contain Anko is free to go and put the heat on from his linebacker spot put so much pressure on the quarterback and through the ball. Right. Gelbaugh now 12 out of 32 for 158 yards and he has missed his last four and one of those misses was an interception. Gelbaugh outside blitz reaches nicely to the ball is dropped. McDonough looking upfield before he caught it. Rogers Alexander came in on the blitz and forced Gelbaugh to throw, although Gelbaugh read it. It'll be third down and ten. Yeah, but he put enough pressure on him to take a little of the accuracy off. You had Janetti coming in from the other side. Penn State has been doing more substitutions, and doing more substituting, and starting to show a little bit here. They look a little fresher. Maryland, 8 out of 16 on third down conversion, which is a very good figure as a matter of fact. 13 59 to play in the game. Penn State leading 25 11. Halftime score was 14 3. Drop play, nowhere. Tommy Neal tried to cross him up. The quick hitter gains only two yards of the fourth down and eight. Mike Garrett made the tackle for Penn State, a senior from New High Park. New York. Right to cut away. The Penn State defense coming up with a good defensive stand. Ray Isom, Kevin Woods back deep. For Penn State, they stand at their own 28 yard line. The kick is wrong and returnable. The third gets his ball for and taken by Daryl Giles at his 36 yard line. He was the up man in the cover. 13 26 to play in the game. There's a timeout. The score, Penn State 25, Maryland 11. We'll be back right after this. Penn State will take over first down and 10 their own 36 yard line and really an opportunity for Penn State to put the game away a time consuming drive even ending in a field goal give them a 17 point lead conversely what Maryland really needs here is a three down and out series to get the ball back and get in the position to score. Gotta get it back. Uh, I think you'll see Penn State try to use some kind of ball control everything uh, uh, the high percentage type of plays with 
uh, very little chance of any kind of a turn. Even if they don't score, killing three, four minutes off the clock would greatly reduce Maryland's opportunity. Tim Manoa now the fullback, and he'll carry it. Over the 40 yard line. Tim Manoa picks up four. Second down and six. Chuck Fawcett and Ted Chatham make the tackle. Manoa's a sophomore from Pittsburgh. 6'1, 225 pounds, and a player just now beginning to find his form. Starting to run with a little reckless abandon. Uh, he got a good block from Muffet, too, number 12. You'll remember that there was an injury on the offensive line, which forced Mark Sickler to start one yard. Woofter went out. Mitch Farrakh has been playing at the guard position. He's a sophomore from Catani and doing a good job. Hand up inside. And not a clean handoff. Call it no game. It'll be third down and six. Well, the defensive strategy by Maryland right now is that they have to get a turnover. They have to get their hands on the ball. And they're, they're going to make Penn State throw the ball. That was a second and five or six. So they came hard. And, you know, uh, maybe that's when Penn State should have thrown the ball. They probably will put it up or try that roll out or something short right here to the tight end. Penn State has turned it over once on an interception. Maryland has lost the fumble and the interception. Penn State 9 out of 14 on third down conversion. Trying in trouble. He throws the screen and it is no good. The pass intended for fullback Steve Smith, but it really never got underway. It was never designed properly. Chuck Fawcett made the big rush in the play and really forced Strang to throw early, which therefore destroyed the timing all over. And Penn State ran only about a minute and a half off the clock. 12-16 to play. They'll have to give it up. Well, you gotta you gotta hold the, the defensive lineman a little bit. That was absolutely they let him in completely untouched, and it, it broke the timing of the screen down, as you said. Bruno, who is coming excellently, will kick to Covington. It's a deep kick. Covington back at his 12. It's to the outside alley. He does a pretty good job getting what he did. Returns eight yards to the 22 yard line and a pretty good return. Carmen Antonio made the initial hit and Drew Bykoski, kind of a specialist on special teams at Penn State, also finished it off. Around the country, North Carolina State leading 12 point Georgia Tech, 17-10 in the third quarter. Auburn and Mississippi all tied up in the third. Texas Tech still leading Texas A&M. That ball game now in the third quarter, 10-6. Pitt hanging on to a 14-3 lead over East Carolina in Pittsburgh. And Florida leads Syracuse 10-0 in the second quarter. The Orangemen, of course, are coming up a big, unbelievable upset win. Alvin Blount, the fake reverse, gets to the 25-yard line. Good play by Chris Sidnall. He did not take the fake, came in, made the tackle, only for a three-yard game. That's a better play than you even realize because when you're out there, you're out there all by yourself. As I said, it's, it's like being a gunfighter. You make a mistake and you're dead. He doesn't make that tackle. This ball carrier is gone. You watch right here. He's out there all by himself. And gone. He misses, and he's up around the corner and gone. It is said perhaps the quarterback is the most difficult position to play because you're always at a pressure point, either running or passing. Second and seven, Gelbach, quick pass over the middle. He's got his man 35 and 40 out to the 32 yard line. Nice timing pass over the middle, and it is complete to the tight end, Bill Rogers. Conlon brought him down, but a very nice design play. Good read by the quarterback, Gelbach. Uncovered, just popped it over the linebacker. Rogers makes a, a nice run. They got four big, strong tight ends. It's a nice gain of 17 yards. And Maryland has a first down at their own 42 yard line. 11 minutes, 10 seconds to play. Penn State leading Maryland 25 11. Abdur Rauf motion near side. Here's Rauf on the naked reverse, looking outside. That's good yardage out to the 49 yard line. It'll be a gain of seven. Bring up second down and three. Mike Zordich made the tackle with Elton Sidnor. That's the kind of play a guy with his speed can take all the way. Well, he was loping a little bit, trying to get outside and turn out. He's a, you know, he's a class winner, but uh, Coach Ross is putting all the tricks out of the bag right now. He wants to get a quick one. He does, and he can take this in for a score. He'll very much back on his football team. Abdul Rahim is a freshman, a redshirt freshman. Six feet, 197 pounds from Millersville, Maryland. He can fly. Give up. But down, gets outside and picks up tough yardage for the Penn State 45-yard line. And another Maryland first down. Don Graham made the tackle. Conlon also there to help out. But Donick now has 48 yards on 15 carries, and he'll feel every single one of them. That's what's known as tough yards. I don't know who's tougher on the defense or the offense, but he, he knows. He lets you know he's in the ball game. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Maryland first down, 10, Penn State 45. Sittner was actually closer to it than Bonato was in the receiver. It'll be second down and 10. That time they ran the tight end right in the flat and brought Bonato, the flanker, in behind him, and the ball was thrown behind him. Don Gennetti with good pressure at defensive end. And Penn State had eight sacks coming into this game. They have not recorded one today, but I believe, George, part of the reason is that because Gelba has either rolled to one side or the other, or when the straight drop back, he's only gone back three, four yards. And they, they haven't come as much as they've had in the past, but they, they've had good defense. Bauer looks like he's ready to come. Here they come now. Yeah, Gelbar rolls around it. He's throwing got a wide open. Touchdown, Maryland. Eric Holder. He was wide open. Maryland within 20 yards of him. And Eric Holder, his first touchdown pass of the season, and Maryland is back to another touchdown. Well, that's what they were looking for, and obviously it's broken coverage. Penn State came with the blitz. Now, somebody obviously is supposed to be on hold up. Let's see where the cornerback is. That's Gennetti. There should be a cornerback somewhere out there. I have a safety rotating over. <laughs> I think Holder was surprised himself. Give the credit to the quarterback, Delva. He got the ball there. Atkinson will attempt the extra point. He's perfect at extra points this year. Eight of eight. Make it nine of nine. Nine minutes, 48 seconds to play in the game. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 25, Maryland 18. We'll be back right after this. Bobby Ross got exactly what he wanted to score, and a quick one at that, a 45-yard touchdown pass. Well, again, it's broken coverage. I don't know what the defense was that they were in. It's either the cornerback's fault who left them or a rotating safety might have supposed to have been coming over. I'm not sure, but definitely broken coverage. Easy touchdown for Maryland. He's yelling at somebody. He's yelling at one of the assistant coaches in lieu of the players. We're still on the field. Ray Isom, and this may have been his assignment, but when the blitz came, Ray Isom rotated up to the line of scrimmage and covered the man out of the backfield. Maybe that was his responsibility. We don't know. Penn State has more to worry about now than just killing the clock. Atkinson's kick. Taken by Tony Muffin. Muffin to the 20. 25 and a good return off of the 30 yard line. So Tony Muffin, a senior, put back there because of his experience, gets a good return. And Penn State will start out operating from the 31. The Maryland scoring drive, 78 yards, six plays. Gelbaugh to Eric Holder, 45 yards and a touchdown. The extra point by Atkinson, and we have a seven-point football game, 9.42 to play. Like I said, George, now Penn State has more to worry about than just killing clock. They need to score. Well, it's, it, it, it's a great trial for your offense now. In some ways, the coach is probably said, Joe, so look, let's see what you can do now. You have to control the football if you're going to win this game. Mumford and Smith behind Doug Strand. Bellamy wide right. Washington wide left. Drop play. Mumford hit in the backfield and drop for a three-yard loss. Chuck Foss set shot the gap. And he knocks Mumford down for a three-yard loss for the 27. It'll be second and 13. Chuck Foss set, a sophomore from Cinnamon, New Jersey. Well, they're starting to come with the linebackers now. You see the little game there for the set 11 coming to the inside gap? center guard gap they want Penn State to throw the ball they want it up there where they got a chance to throw he got there so quickly that Steve Smith the fullback could not get his block now Strang who has completed nine out of 18 for 194 yards two touchdowns will have to throw a lot of time looking deep passes caught for a first down the 44 yard line and it's intercepted Rocky Washington, but no. Don Brown has come up with the interception. Well, there's a lot of bumping around there, I swear. Let's take a look at it. I thought it was dual possession at first. Brown has got good cover. He steps in front. And he, had, he had the possession of the ball. He ended up with it. He had three quarters of the football. Don Brown. Three quarters, Washington with only one quarter. You see Brown rip it away. So this is the worst dual possession initially. But Brown, great defensive play, ripped it apart. First 
first and ten. Maryland at the Penn State 44. Holder in motion. This is Brown. In trouble. He'll lose a yard at the 45 yard line. Penetration by the coach of Dan Morgan. Also Bob White. The two defensive ends pitched in. It'll be a loss of one. The second and 11. Well, Penn State's defense obviously is fired up. You know, they, they, they thought they had a ball game right here. They're starting to, you know, sift through their fingers and get very aroused. And have to be careful not making major errors, which they did in the last series. Penn State likes to rotate their defensive personnel, but Rodgers Alexander, who's played a good game today, he's on the sideline. Abdul Rauf in motion, second and 11. Yelbaugh. In the flat. Good solid shot by Shane Palmer. The pass completed to Padonic, but he'll lose yardage on the play as Palmer was there to throw for a three yard loss. And again, this is a little bit of a swing screen out here. Tries to dump it off to Padonic, and Shane Palmer was there. And say, this time, I'm going to give it to you, Padonic. Great hit. Big, big, big obvious down for him. Uh, rather, Gelba, 14 out of 37, 218 yards. Now here's where your defense has to pick up your offense. Third down and 12. Big play in this football game. Gelba, deep drop this time. Right in the middle, and he's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Holder, Don Graham was in front. May have gotten a hand on the ball, and all first fell in the punt. Lost another linebacker place. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the now we went on a quick count, which was good. That's smart football. But Donnie Graham made a great uh, adjustment to the ball. He made a diving uh, attempt on him and took it on his fingers. That, that was a great play. Darrell Wright in his first game ever as a collegiate, averaging 37-9 a kick. Ray Ice in a single safety back deep at his 10. He'll let this one alone. Very high kick and into the end zone. Right all Zone, so Penn State clinging their one touchdown lead will take over first and ten from their own 20. 7 22 to play in the game. There's a timeout in the act for the score. Penn State 25 and Maryland 18 will be back in right after that. Saturday, October 13th at 12 noon when the Air Force Academy Falcons meet the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and South Bend on the TCS Metro Sports Television Network. This has turned out to be a terrific football game. Hope you're enjoying it. I'm Stan Saver along with George Paterno. Live from Beaver Stadium in University Park, Pennsylvania. Penn State will open the drive on a wing left. Steve Smith, fullback. Still on his feet, driving across the 45. Makes the tackle for the Turks. Make it second and three. <laughs> Halftime score, 14 to three, Penn State. The team's been trading scores. Trading scores and trading mistakes. And open each other. There have been some big, big plays in this football game, long yardage. Hamilton motion near side. Whistle. And the play 
will be blown dead before it'll be a dead ball foul. And the man in motion, Eric Hamilton, moved towards the line of scrimmage while he was in motion. That'll cost Penn State five. And a first down. I yeah. think he had the first down. Those, those are the things that kill you. And uh, instead of second and three, it'll now be second and eight, almost a passing situation. Dead ball foul. False start. Offense. Second down. Eric Hamilton, a sophomore, 6'1, 186 from Cleveland, Ohio. And I know the ball game is being seen in Cleveland. And that is the first penalty of the day against Penn State. So now it is second and eight. Sprang with the roll. The peak. 25 and out to the 26 yard line. It'll bring up third down and four. Chuck Fawcett and Scott Shankweiler make the tackle from there. So a big third down and four. Clock running, six minutes. 12 seconds to play in the game. And your third down conversions, always important. This one is crucial. Third down and four. And Strang will call for time. Well, what happened, Maryland lined up. They put eight men on the line of scrimmage. They were going to come, and they went man to man on the receivers and hit there. Well, Penn State 9 out of 15, 60% on third down conversions. That's excellent. We'll come back and see what happens. 5.54 to play in the game. There's a timeout in the action. The score, Penn State 25, Maryland 18. We'll be back right after this. Third down and four. George, you're the coach's brother, but for right now, you're the coach. What are you calling for? I go back to that roll. I've been getting three or four. I've got lots of one pass, a pretty slow play. We see they got a trips formation here to the short side of the field. Hamilton in motion towards the wide side. Spray in trouble. He sacked. He fumbles. Penn State picks it up. And he stopped shy of the first down. But they were most fortunate to come up with the ball. Nick Hayden, the offensive center, picked up the fumble by Strang. And otherwise, Maryland would have had the ball at the Penn State 20. Well, that's, you know, this one's got to be afraid. They come with a blitz here. That's 11 four sets coming in there. They're very fortunate that ball didn't turn, get turned over to Maryland. Now yeah, Bruno will kick. Covington back at his 35. Bruno's kick is very low. But if you're going to roll on it, let's see if Covington lets it go. He'll pick it up at his 30. He's in trouble. Slips and falls. He tried to make a cut. And around at the 30 yard line. So Maryland. 5 12 to play in the game. A little bit shy of 69 yards from the goal line and a tie and perhaps a win. What they tried to do in the last play, they put Mumford into the slot and he ran about a seven yard down and out with the string of the short and then the two. Carolina and Clemson are tied up. BYU undefeated rolling along over Athens, Colorado State. How about this? The new leading team with number two right to Ohio State seven in the first quarter. And Michigan now ahead of Michigan State. First and ten, Maryland just outside the 30 yard line. 5 12 to play. Fake pitch, Gelbach firing, and he's caught by Holder. And he's got a first down at the 45 yard line. Just a quick look in. Holder makes the reception a 15 yard gain. Sidner and Mash Antonio make the tackle. Dangerous play, but Maryland doesn't care right now. That's just a fake to the one side. He steps up and hits Holder to the top of the screen here on a quick post. Maryland, if you're thinking of such things as all three of their timeouts remaining. First and ten. The Terps at their own 45-yard line, trailing in the ball game, 25 to 18, four minutes, 45 seconds to play in the football game. Total in motion. Delbar wants the ball. Fires, firing deep and it is intercepted. Big jump like that. 
They had plenty of time, uh, Stan. Uh, I think they were over anxious myself, especially that was not very well designed. Uh, in fact, uh, Gelba is throwing across his body a 30-yard pass, you know, uh, which is very difficult. Penn State with an opportunity to control the ball for a while. They're at their own 22. Frank fakes. He fires, and it is incomplete. Frank had a first down. I mean, it's chosen to run. He also was dangerously close to being past the line of scrimmage, which would have been a penalty and loss of down. Well, they, they've been successful. Both teams are hurting each other with bootleg action and defensive containment and getting caught inside. That time, Strang, as you well said, he could have run it for the, the, the first down yardage, and, you know, it would seem the right thing to do rather than put the ball up for grabs in this situation. Now Strang, face with second and ten. It's Tony Mumford. Up the middle, across the 25 and out near the 27-yard line. Mumford picks up five. It'll be third down and five. Fawcett and Parker make the tackle. Tony Mumford has now picked up 69 yards on 18 carries. He's also caught a touchdown pass. He's played a fine game. He's been running tough, and you know, you almost forget that DJ Dozier's not playing. Not a good play. That's right. The running backs have done a good job. Well, you see the four-minute mark. Penn State on their last third down and four could not convert. This time it is third down and five. Strang wants to run. He will not get there. He gets only one yard off to the 28. And again, the Maryland defense does an exceptional job of stopping Penn State. The Lions will have to punt again. Fawcett and Wilson, the two inside linebackers, make the tackle. And Bruno will be caught upon again. And again, Maryland will have a lot of time to get the tying score. Stan, Penn State put two receivers out wide. Shankweiler, the defensive end, dropped off. And then he came back in, anticipating the rollout, and did a good job. Bruno's kick is short. Left. Fumble! Huntington fumbles. It's loose at the 43. And Maryland is recovered. The kick was a low-line driver. Keita Covington took it on the run. And really fumbled off being hit. At this time, TCS Metro Sports would like to thank the following individuals for their assistance in the production of today's telecast. For the University of Maryland, athletic director Richard Dull, head coach Bobby Ross, sports information director Jack Zane for Penn State, athletic director Jim Tarman, head coach Joe Paterno, sports information director Dave Baker. Maryland, their own 43-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for a pro set. The late draw, Madonna, a lot of room to the 50 and run out of bounds. At the Penn State 48 yard line, close to a first down. Sidner ran him out of bounds, but he got out of bounds. 3.06 to play in the game. Good call. Uh, two wide receivers, and they come out with a draw play. Penn State was playing for the pass. See Conley get caught inside. Hey, Gordon is a tough man, and, and Badanik just ran right over. Officially a gain of nine. It'll be second down and one. Joe Paterno certainly has got as much, if not more, than he bargained for. The Maryland Terrapins came to play. Second down, one yard to go. Adonik wants to throw. Little pass out the flat. Tommy Neal to the 45, the 40, and deep to Penn State territory to the 38-yard line. So the gain is 11, and Maryland has a first down near the Penn State 38-yard line. Conlon eventually made the tackle. Another good call. That's that little swing screen. The back just came out. They release everybody. They want to get him upfield. He picked up 11 yards first down, and they're on the move. The clock running. 2.55 to play in this game. And this drive will tell the story of the game. And one play may decide the victory. Gelbach firing to the sideline. He's cut. Greg Hill with the reception. He has knocked out of bounds at the Penn State 23-yard line. Sidner knocked him out, but it's a gain of 15. And Maryland with a first down at the Penn State 23. Clock stops, 2.47 to play. Perfectly executed play. Little fake to the inside again. He gets outside of contain, drills Hill in a deep out, gets both feet in. Well done. 2.37 to play. Penn State 25. Maryland 18. Once again, and again, it gave Jared the floor of the church. Rich Padana gets 
inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, a five-yard game. Graham and Hamilton make the tackle. It'll be second and five as the clock rolls down to 220. The reason why that play is working, the defensive ends are coming up so up field so deep to put on the rush, they're running that quick drawer inside it. They know they've got plenty of time, but Doc now 62 yards, 17 carries. He scored once. He's also scored in a two-point conversion. Second and five from the Penn State 18. Inside block to the 10, the foul, touchdown, Maryland! Out of the foul, an 18 yard touchdown run, and Maryland is within a point. Stan, they found a big hole over the left side. Just a simple tailback lead. Mount does a great job of running, smell the goal line, and there's no one who could stop it. Now we're going to look on the field to see what Bobby Ross wants to do. There are still one minute and 52 seconds to play. This is it. The two-point conversion. Here's your ball game right here. Maryland will go for the win. A slot right. Galbar. Time. Throws in the end zone. No! The pass was intended for Hill. He was open, but it was too tall. The two-point conversion failed. But there is still 1.52 to play in this game. There's a timeout in the action as we watch. When they put the slot, the flanker in motion, a little pick play here. They wanted to go to the pick man. He comes back to the tight end coming across just a little too high. It was catchable. It was catchable, but I think he would have gone out of bounds. It was pretty close. Tough break for Maryland. Galbaugh really drilled it. 1.52 to play in the game. A timeout of the action to score. Penn State 25, Maryland 24. We'll be back right after this. Down. Tony Hunter's flag is down. No gain on the play. 
legal procedure Penn State's game on line and that will also save Maryland a timeout because of the penalty Eric Wilson co captain moving in here's the call from the referee dead ball foul that'll cost Penn State five Joe Paterno miles who was that on well, it would seem to be, you know, it's hard to tell from the angle up here. We let the flankers go in motion. We try to get back to the center of the formation. It seems that they're coming up field just a fraction of a second. It's a dead ball foul. The legal procedure gets the offense. Direct the clock to one minute, 52 seconds, please. First down. Now, if you're wondering why Maryland would accept, they have no choice. Because it was a dead ball foul, technically the play never got underway. That's why the clock will be... Recycled three seconds will be added on back to 152. Maryland had no choice in declining or accepting, they had to take the penalty. So now it is first down and 15 yards to go. Maryland does not suffer a loss on the clock, and Penn State will need a first down to hang on to the football, otherwise, they will have to punt. Maryland will use one after every play, I would imagine. Steve Smith got a hole to the 50 and into Maryland territory at the 49 yard line. So a big 10 yard gain for Steve Smith. It'll be second and five, and Maryland will use one of their timeouts. Good call. Penn State used two tight ends, a little counter, and they ran the ball over Conlon, number 57, to tackle, and he really blew his man out. Maryland with two timeouts left, 143 to play in the football game. Steve Smith now 42 yards on eight carries, but a big 10 yards there gave Penn State a realistic hope uh, picking up a first down and really stuck a pin into Maryland's balloon because they could have held them, got the ball back with a fair amount of time left. After the first and start using their timeout, they can take the ball. Of course, if they get it back, they're going to have to do it strictly on a two-minute Remember, Maryland has an exceptional field goal kicker, Jess Atkinson. He is Maryland's career scoring leader and has tremendous range. He can get it done. Second down and five when time is back in. Well, you can't you couldn't ask for more if you're looking for excitement. No, terrific football game. And the difference came down to a couple of two-point conversions. Penn State tried a two-point conversion. They made it. Maryland has tried two, made one, and missed one. And that is the difference in the game thus far that missed two point conversion on the last touchdown. Second and five. Penn State at the Maryland 49. Mumford drives forward for a couple to the 47. Maryland will use their second timeout. It will be third down and three. And a first down for Penn State here would just about finish it. Actually, even if Penn State is not able to get a first down, we're forced to punt. The field position would make it most difficult for Maryland because they are already in Maryland territory, and presuming Bruno would get off a good kick, and he's been rather consistent, they'd start off from deep in their own territory. Well, you always got to thread at a block or a bad kick, and uh, if Maryland gets any kind of field position with a minute to go, you know, uh, as you said, Atkinson's got great range. You know, they're still in striking distance of winning this ball. I'm wondering if. Penn State would risk the rollout. Certainly, Maryland will be pinched in. They're expecting a run. I think it would be a good call because, you know, the quarterback doesn't have to hand it off. He gets a hold of it, and he can tuck it away. He can say, look, use our rollout, but we're taking the option of the pass. So if you run for that first down, and uh, chances are, you know, he might. When you get people trying to tackle you on the move, you can sometimes you find that little crease or crack or daylight to the inside, and, you know, your body momentum can take you for a couple of yards. It's a much safer play. Yeah, you know, than throwing the ball in this situation or even just a straight handle. Of course, when you got a dozier, you certainly have another option to go outside. This could be the game. Third down and three. And here is Strang on the rollout. He'll never get there. He'll lose yardage back to the 49. And Maryland will use their third and final timeout. Ted Chapman, the defensive end, stuffed it beautifully. Never had a chance to get going. The play loses yardage. It'll be fourth down and five, and Penn State will indeed have to punt. Maryland will get the ball back. They won't have any timeouts left, but they'll have better than a minute to move it upfield for a 
possibility of a field goal to win it. The big thing about that drive for Penn State, they made Maryland use their timeouts. That's vitally important. But you know, three times in a row, Penn State needing one first down to really finish out the ball game. They have not been able to do it any of the three times. Maryland's defense this half has really played tough. Covington back at his 10 yard line. Maryland will get the ball with no timeouts left. And I'll bet that Bruno will kick to the sideline. They do not want a punt return here. Maryland may come for the block. And here they come from the outside. Bruno gets it away. It is short. Takes a bounce. Not a good kick at all. And Maryland will take over at their own 28 yard line. The kick is only good for 21 yards. And that puts Maryland in terrific position. They have a minute 23 to get it done. And remember, a field goal wins the game for Maryland. The first poor punt of John Bruno's this entire year. Well, he tried to punt it high for what the coverage. I don't know if they try to get it out of bounds or not, but that's a poor punt. Uh, Maryland couldn't ask for a, a better punt than, than that. Gelbaugh, 18 out of 42. 257 yards. He's been intercepted twice. Gelbaugh to throw. Nicking, firing deep over the middle, and he's incomplete and almost intercepted. Off the hands, Hill was in the area, and so was Holder. They were open for a minute. Well, it was a four-man rush, very little pressure. Gelba stepped up in the pocket, saw Holder on a deep curl. That was a deep, deep curl. They're trying to get the ball just in position for that field goal. And all they need, really, for a legitimate chance would be about 35 yards. Penn State has not shown any blitzing at all practically since the one time they got burned here. I think they're going to have to put some pressure on it. Second down and ten. Yellow ball. He falls down on his own. Penn State got a break because Gelbaugh fell down on his own at the 15-yard line. Maryland cannot stop the clock. It rolls down to a minute. It'll be third down and very long yardage. That was again a break for Penn State. They're in a good position to stop him right here. Third, here comes the blitz. Galba scrambles out of there. He looks, he fires, got his man. The pass complete up to the 30, but it'll still be fourth down and seven. Sullivan with the reception. The clock is running. 39 seconds. You see it. Fourth down and seven. Last chance for Maryland. They cannot stop the clock. This is it right here. 30 seconds to play. Gelbaugh being chased, he fires, it is caught, but short of the first down, no, still on his feet, what a play by McDonald, he's out to 39, a first down, the clock stops, 19 seconds as the chains move. They still need another first down to get in field goal range, but that was a big play, great run by Badonik. Badonik kept this game alive, the clock starts. 18, 17, first and 10. Gelbaugh throws it away. It'll stop the clock with 14 seconds to play. Uh, getting a first down no longer is important because they wouldn't have enough time to get it anyway. What they need with a football at about the 40-yard line, they need about 25 yards. They, they need a deep out that will stop the clock, uh, which will get them within range so they got enough time for the kick. And if Penn State were able to get a sack, the game would end. The thing is, you run into a problem here now. If you run anything over the middle and it's caught, and he doesn't get out of bounds, they might never have. They won't have any time to, to be able to, uh, to go for the kick. If it's a first down, the clock would first stop. Down. But probably not enough time to get it done. Gelbaugh to the sideline. It is caught, but it's only a five-yard gain, six-yard gain. The pass complete to Blount, but the play took six That's seconds. The ball's the 45. It'll be third down and four. The down and yardage, frankly, are inconsequential. Maryland needs 20 yards to have a chance at a field goal. They must get to the Penn State, let's say, 35. That would make a 52-yard field goal. Bobby Ross pacing the sidelines. Who can blame them? Eight seconds to play in this football game. They must get 20 yards on this play. Gelbaugh over the middle. It is incomplete or complete. They're calling it complete. 
at the 35 yard line. The wow. clock will not stop till they move the chains. Frankly, Maryland should have their field goal unit on there. There's a lot of confusion. Player they running got, on. That's got, that's got the a race. They're not going to get a chance. What? And there's a flag. There's one second left. And the penalty will go against Maryland. Maryland sent out their offensive unit to get off one more play, but there never would have been enough time. Now they'll have to send the field goal unit out. It will be a 57 yard attempt. Now the question is the clock starts and the game is over. I, I, Stan, I was just going to say, Fuzzy put that ball down, the clock would stop. Uh, as soon as they mark the ball for play, because it was not a dead ball foul, as you see the two coaches meet, Bobby Ross and Joe Paterno, they started the clock once again. And that is the end of the football game. The final score, Penn State 25, Maryland 24. We'll be back right after this. Please join in celebrating the Disney Lions victory. With the symbolic ringing of the 